Uyama-kun can't help but complain about Akutsu-san, who sits right next to him and is quite a troublesome girl. Moreover, her friends seem just as uncontrollable as her, not to mention annoying. Uyama is aware that she has a bit of a habit of skipping classes, and when she does rarely attend them, she mostly tends to sleep. However, the worst thing that has ever happened to him is that Akutsu-san has made his room her own little hangout spot. It all started when they happened to meet in front of Uyama-kun's house, and she just barged right in. Moreover, she seemed extremely delighted to find out that he lives alone, without any adult supervision. Sounds quite adventurous. Since then, she has obviously been coming over almost every day after school. Thankfully, she hasn't invited her group of friends to make it a fully-fledged hangout spot. Even though she can't even remember his name, she thinks it's his job to buy the latest magazine editions for her. Has she confused him with her personal errand boy? This girl also loves wrestling, and keeps trying all her moves on Uyama-kun. She doesn't stop wrestling him even when he begs to give up, and the messed up part is that he secretly enjoys getting all beaten up by a girl. He wonders what will happen if a guy, who turns out to be her boyfriend, shows up one day demanding money from him in return for messing with his woman. He wouldn't be surprised, since she is not a regular girl. He might even be robbed someday by her or her band of goons, but his inner pervert wins over fears every time. Uyama-kun is walking home, thinking that he needs to figure out Akutsu-san's weakness to get her out of his room, once and for all. His actions are completely the opposite, though, since he goes inside and announces that he has bought the juice she wanted. Of course, he has to do whatever she commands, since she scares him so much. It turns out that he's about 10 steps behind her, as she has found his weakness for the sexy videos. It's quite obvious with the amount of videotapes he has just lying around his room. He cannot afford to get this information leaked at school. The boys aren't a problem. However, what will the girls think about him? He begs Akutsu-san to keep her mouth shut about it, as his life will be over with this information out in the public. Akutsu-san is quite a devil when she puts on the videos on the TV and tells him to do what he does while watching them. This is the only way she will keep her mouth shut about his deranged habits. Furthermore, she has to keep his eyes open by force to make him watch the video. He is obviously uncomfortable, but she doesn't care as long as she's enjoying herself. He has had enough, and decides to tell her off for torturing him. But all she has to do to stop his anger is show a little bit of her chest, and he is cooled off immediately, making up his mind to tell her off the next day as she hasn't told anyone what's happened here yet. It's a brand new day, and Akutu-san is casually hanging out in Uyama's room as if it's the most obvious thing to do. She's lazing around on his bed, while Ayuma can't help but notice how nervous she makes him whenever she's around. He tries his luck, suggesting she go home. Of course, it doesn't work, and she refuses to get off the bed since moving is just such a bother. She can't stop with a simple comment, and challenges him to force her off the bed if he wants her to go home. What is with her and applying force all the time? He looks at her miniskirt, and knows that he'd have to touch her to get her off the bed. She gives him two minutes to start, when he realizes that she has deliberately challenged him to do this since she's aware he doesn't have the guts to do it. Akutsu-san doesn't stop embarrassing him, and passes a sly comment about him being a virgin. She really seems to enjoy that Uyama is embarrassed to touch a girl. His pride can't take all this embarrassment anymore, and he finally makes a move. However, he only grabs her wrist, which should be enough to make her move, right? Akutsu-san realizes that he is really ogling at her, and hits him with full force, announcing that his two minutes are up. She can't let this opportunity go, and decides to mock him even more for not being able to move her from his bed. Uyama's inner pervert actually doesn't mind if he keeps losing, since it's the first time he's in bed with a girl. Even though it's because she beat him, who cares about all these technicalities, right? It turns out that he is really looking forward to losing the next day as well. Akutsu-san is sleeping like a log in Uyama's room, but it's obviously problematic. Where is he going to sleep if she takes up all this space on the bed? He tries to wake her up, but remembers how angry she got when she was woken up by a teacher at school. She'll definitely be 10 times scarier and grumpier with him. He's too scared. However, he has to put his foot down. After all, it's his room and she has taken it over as if he doesn't exist. He musters up some courage and asks her to roll over, since he wants her to get up and go home. Of course, her scary face even while she sleeps doesn't help much to keep his courage intact. He decides to proceed with this mission slowly, and with extra caution. He doesn't want to trigger one of her world-famous outbursts. Before he can touch her, however, another thought crosses his mind. What if she misunderstands him for touching her while he is only trying to wake her up? He doesn't even have any witnesses to prove his innocence. Therefore, he decides to let her sleep, while she holds onto his arm, not wanting to get her all pissed off. Akutsu-san has arrived at her hangout spot at Uyama's room, and she looks quite busy on her phone. Uyama doesn't feel too happy with how loud she is when he hears her talking on the phone. This is when the thing he is afraid of most comes up, as apparently, Akutsu-san's friend on the other line wants to come to her place. Uyama doesn't want her useless friends to come over and turn his room into their hangout spot forever, making him their servant and errand boy. 
his life will be truly over if that ever happens, and he'll probably end up homeless. He decides to stop her before she invites her friends over, and goes straight to grab the phone from her. She obviously misunderstands this gesture as a desperate plea for a makeout session by Uyama. Thankfully, he makes it clear to her that she can't call anyone over to his room since he doesn't prefer strangers in his space. Surprisingly, Akutsu-kun understands where he is coming from, and promises that she won't tell anything about his room to her friends. However, Uyama does not look convinced, and feels like the worst case scenario is going to happen in the near future. Well, she might actually be telling the truth, since his room is her own personal hangout spot and she has decided to hide it from everyone else. Maybe it's so good that she doesn't want to share it with anyone, including Uyama. She prepares to sleep, while Uyama seems a little relieved with her plans, asking her to never unlock the door for anyone except for him. It's school time when Akutsu-san and her band of friends are discussing how some of them make money by showing their undergarments. Being seen is just no big deal for them. Uyama is absolutely certain that they have no morals, while promising that he wasn't looking at her undergarments earlier. Well, of course we believe him. Later that day, Akutsu-san is back in his room, as usual, trying to play a video game which is giving her a hard time. Her undergarments are showing with the way she sits, and Uyama can't help but think she is showing it to him on purpose. He wonders if she's trying to collect money from him as well. He can't let her find out that he has been looking, since he is scared that she will make his life a living hell. He might not even be able to graduate, or worse, everyone will come to know that he looks at girls' undergarments. He has to play it cool, and not let her notice that his eyes have been on her. However, she makes it extremely difficult for him to ignore her when she starts spreading her legs. Someone please tell her to calm down, and keep those legs together. Finally, she notices that he has been watching her, which freaks him out. He immediately offers to do anything for her to keep quiet, since he doesn't have any money to offer. However, his fears are drowned out when she offers to show him her underwear for free as a special treatment, since he lets her use his games and manga. Uyama can't deny such a generous peace offering, of course. A few moments later, he is over the moon after receiving his private showing, but makes sure to remind her to keep this a secret. Akutsu-san is in his room again, but this day is different, since she leaves for her home. He knows that she has been injured, maybe she was in a fight? This day has been especially scary for him, since she's in a bad mood. Moreover, after she leaves he finds out that she has forgotten her phone. He can give it back if he chases her, however, is she worth all this trouble? Staring at the phone, he is aware that he is especially interested as he thinks he might have finally seen her weak side. Maybe she lost a fight or something, while she is always teasing him with a smirk on her face. He shakes off his thoughts and picks up her phone. He clicks on the video, which shows him that Akutu-san has been trying to play with a cat, realizing that she has some cute traits as well. It turns out that she was in a bad mood after not being able to touch the cat, and that's how she got scratched and injured. He is so confused after finding out a completely different side to her. Meanwhile, Akutsu-san has returned back to his room and is not happy about the fact that he has watched that embarrassing video of hers. However, Uyama is glad that he has found one likable quality about her. Akutsu-san is extremely pissed since her hands are injured but doesn't want to reveal how she got injured in the first place. Uyama obviously knows the reason, and makes the suggestion that she should go to the hospital. The main agenda behind his suggestion is to make her leave, of course. She becomes hysterical after hearing this, and refuses to go to the hospital or do anything that he wants her to do. He realizes that he has to do something before she gets really hurt, and is glad that she has admitted that her wounds are hurting. He thinks of something fast, and comes up with the solution to give her something sweet. Ice cream obviously will work the best in this situation. He offers her the ice cream, which works totally against his favor as it's frozen and it hurts her while she tries to eat it. She is even more pissed now. She cries out in pain, asking for him to help her eat. Uyama obviously only thinks about his own perverted benefit, and is hoping that her hand could be in pain the next day as well. Does he want to keep feeding her desserts one after the other every day, or is he too sadistic which makes him enjoy other people's pain? The next day, Uyama asks Akutsu-san if she has exercised today. Of course, she has run too much and now her foot hurts. It is revealed that she was running from the student counselor Sasaki after school, and hid in Uyama's room since it's so close to their campus. Her little marathon has made her tired, so she lays down on the bed asking Uyama to give her a massage. Uyama obviously doesn't want to give this troublesome girl a massage, until he sneaks a peek at her undergarments. Ultimately, he decides that he has to give her a massage to stop her from turning into her scary self. He starts off with the massage, which makes Akutsu soon moan out loud. Touching her body is causing weird sensations in Uyama's brain as well. However, he's too embarrassed after hearing her moan so loudly. What will the neighbors think when they hear her double-meaning comments? Finally, he decides to use this rare opportunity to take his revenge for being tortured by her every day. He relaxes his hands, and prepares to apply as much force on her as he can. He has to go all the way to make any difference to her. However, her moans continue to get louder. Is his aggressive massage not having any effect on her? Soon after, Akutsu soon becomes quiet, and there's a strange atmosphere in the room. 
Oyama doesn't know where to touch her anymore, since he can't forget her little moans from before. Soon enough, Akutu-san tells her to stop massaging her as she is feeling better now. If this continues, then maybe she's afraid that she won't be able to control her shouts and moans any longer, which might end up alerting the neighbors more than Uyama would like. Uyama is sleeping on his bed, when Akatsu-san arrives telling him to get off her spot. Has she forgotten that it's actually his bed? She tries really hard to make him move over, or wake him up, but to no success. It looks like he really is asleep. However, it turns out that Uyama is actually pretending to be asleep, and is not going to get up at all. He is not going to let her take over his bed today. It's his turn to rest. Finally, Akutu soon really wants to play some video games, which is exactly why Uyama has preoccupied the most comfortable spot in the room in advance, indirectly telling her to go home. Uyama hears a shutter sound from nearby, and is extremely curious about what is happening around him since he can't see anything with his eyes closed. He is determined to not move, even if she kicks him. However, she does something even more scary as she is taking selfies with him lying on the bed, announcing that she will use these pictures to threaten him someday. She wants to take this game a step further, and do something more extreme, so she gets up on the bed which scares Uyama even more, since he has already heard the word threaten. Meanwhile, Akutsu-san takes a selfie by revealing a bit of her chest, which makes Uyama even more nervous and he can't help but change the expression on his face. He wonders if he should get up and put a stop to this act. However, he can't risk pissing her off for pretending to be asleep this whole time. This is when she takes a close-up picture of his face, saying that his face looks like he knows exactly what's going on around him. She moves closer to him, trying to figure out if he is actually asleep, and wonders why he never looks her in the eye. Well, maybe he's too busy looking elsewhere. Uyama's efforts do not turn out to be a success, since Akutsu-kun doesn't go home and decides to read some manga in his room instead. Akutsu-san has been reading manga on Uyama's bed, and looks extremely engrossed in the story. She may not have realized that her posture is making her undergarments too obvious for Uyama, who wants her to leave even more than before. Turning around, she confirms if he has been glaring at her. Uyama obviously tries to disprove her accusations, but she is willing to fight to prove herself right. Furthermore, Uyama can't take the risk of her exposing him since he will be given a straightaway death sentence by society. Meanwhile, she has taken him in a judo stranglehold telling him to say that he has been looking at her, or she will not let him go. He decides to play it safe and ask for her forgiveness. However, she's not in a mood to show any kind of mercy. Of course, he can't tell her he wants her to go home either since she is so soft and smells so good. He is clearly getting distracted by all this feminine energy, and there's an awkward moment between them when she turns him around. After this, her stranglehold becomes more gentle, when she tells him to confess whatever he has seen or thought about her. This is kind of a lose-lose situation for him, isn't it? Akutsu-san wants to eat dessert today, and wants Uyama to buy something sweet and salty for her. He, of course, obliges, and soon returns back after bringing whatever she wanted. When he comes near his door, he hears her screaming from inside. This annoys him even more, who has just planned to chase her away by scaring her off with cockroaches. He enters the room, and finds Akatsu-san on the floor, looking extremely scared by a cockroach. She is so panicky that she doesn't even realize that Uyama has returned. He is glad that she is a normal girl who is scared of cockroaches, even after being so scary. She even decides that she doesn't want to stay at his place anymore, since it is infested with cockroaches. It's good news for him, of course, but it turns out that she doesn't even move from her place, even after five minutes. He is enjoying watching her experience the fear that she instilled in him. Being this cowardly isn't as fun, is it? He's been standing outside his door, watching her quietly, thinking that he doesn't like cockroaches in his room after all. He decides to go in there and save her, but finds her looking too pissed. She might take out her anger and fear on him, it turns out that she is crying and wants Uyama to return as soon as possible, which makes him glad that he is wanted in such a situation. He leaves her to her own devices for a while, as it will be hard for him to pretend to be normal after hearing her pleas. Today has been a good day for his ego, hasn't it? Akutsu-san has a favor to ask Uyama this time, and before she can say anything about what it is, he instantly refuses. There's no trust, since he can't really expect anything good from her. This is too frustrating for Akutsu, as she wants to first tell him what it is she wants. Before he leaves, she tells him that she wants to do it with him. Now, this catches Uyama's attention and excitement lights up his face. His hopes and dreams are crushed when Akatsu-san pulls out a handout for supplementary lessons because she got a penalty for violating school regulations. She has noticed that Uyama's face has lost its excitement, and offers to let him fondle her chest if he helps her out with the schoolwork. No one wants to be expelled, right? He knows that this is a trap to make him do all of her work, so he refuses, even if he means he doesn't get to touch her intimately. Akutsu-san loses her cool, since she will most definitely be kicked out of her house if she gets expelled. Of course, it's not a big deal for Uyama, who has already been kicked out of his place. She decides to live in his room if she gets kicked out, and this is reason enough for him to help her out. He can't take the chance of letting her live at his place forever, and does all of her work. 
Moreover, he doesn't even touch her chest after being done, which is quite surprising. Uyama is going home late today, since his sensei wanted him to finish up some things before he leaves. He stayed there long and even read some manga. He hopes that Akutsu-san has given up and gone home, but when he reaches near his room, he is welcomed with Akutsu-san banging on the door, acting like a debt collector. She really doesn't take a hint, does she? She's really angry at him, as she thinks that he is ignoring her, which makes Uyama laugh out loud in front of her. She can be surprisingly childish sometimes. She puts her hands in her pockets, which makes him think that she's pulling out a weapon to shred him to bits. However, she just wants to make sure he doesn't keep her waiting and pulls out her phone. They can trade contact information and call each other the next time something like this happens. His heart pounds since it's his first time getting a girl's contact info. Well, there's a first time for everything. Uyama is approached by one of his classmates at school, who seems fascinated that he lives alone. He's interested to find out how he manages and wants to see if he can stop by his place today. This is when his eyes fall over to Akutsu-san, who's sleeping on the desk next to him, and tells the guy that it's impossible for them to come over today. Of course, they think that he's refusing because he has a girlfriend. It is a good idea, so Oyama plays along, agreeing that he actually does have a girlfriend. It turns out that Akutsu-san has listened to their conversation, and is teasing Uyama about calling her his girlfriend. This makes him extremely embarrassed and apologetic, while Akutsu-san only wants to know if he actually feels this way about her. He might have even boasted about being really intimate with her. Akutsu-san believes that a plain guy like him will be exposed soon, as everyone will find out that he lied about having a girlfriend. She suggests that he can avoid it by making his lie a reality. His reaction is too funny for her to control herself, while Uyama just wants to leave her right away. He obviously can't take all this teasing right now. It's raining quite heavily today which makes Uyama think that maybe Akutsu-san won't come over today. No one can travel when the weather conditions are this bad, right? Well, a little bad weather is not going to stop Akutsu-san. Soon enough, she's standing at his door, completely drenched because of the rain. She complains about the rain starting suddenly, which is pointless because the rain never informs you beforehand. She enters his place, dripping all of the water on his floors. It's going to take ages to clean this up. Furthermore, she finds out that her shirt is see-through now, and wants Uyama to take a look as well. She takes off her shirt in front of him, making the poor guy close his eyes out of utter embarrassment. Now, she wants to take a shower at his place. This is getting really out of hand for Uyama, but she doesn't care, and just wants to get rid of all of the stickiness that has made her so uncomfortable. Maybe she could have stayed home and not gotten caught in the middle of a downpour. He tries to give her the towel without looking at her, and she has a problem with this as well. Just because she's aware that he likes looking at her topless self, he should have the guts to look at her without feeling shy. Uyama doesn't want to be played into her hands with all the teasing, and tries to keep his cool. However, she still believes that he is a pervert who will use the towel that she rubs all over her body later on. On top of this, she starts sneezing, which makes Uyama scared. She's about to catch a cold, isn't she? Akutsu-san doesn't even listen to his advice about drying herself before she comes down with influenza or something. She's the one who actually should be embarrassed about standing in the middle of the room in her underwear and yelling at the poor guy. However, she takes this opportunity to mock him for being a virgin. How is this a good time for this conversation? She sneezes again, which is funny because Uyama finds her sneezes quite feminine. Watching him standing right there and grinning is quite frustrating for her, making her speechless for the first time since he has met her. Akutsu-san is not drenched anymore, and has changed into exercise clothes. This is quite a new development for Uyama, who has never seen her in these clothes, even during PE class. She complains about her clothes stinking of sweat, which isn't surprising, they are exercise clothes after all. Turns out that these clothes are always in her bag, as she needs it for gym and PE almost every day. Does she even remember the last time she washed them? I doubt it. Things don't get better for Uyama, as now Akutsu-san wants him to lend her some clothes. She obviously can't stand her own stink anymore. He has never seen anyone wear his clothes except for maybe his own self. Looking at his hesitation, Akutsu-san decides to jump on his bed, telling him that if he does not give her the clothes, then she will start exercising on top of his bed. He has to give her what she wants if he doesn't want his bed covered in sweat. Uyama wonders if her sweat on his bed would be as bad as she's trying to make it sound, but he decides that he doesn't want to find out. He gives her a sweatshirt, which makes her happy, thankfully. The comfortable sweatshirt is enjoyable in a chilly room, isn't it? On the other hand, Uyama can't stop thinking that she is wearing his clothes, and since she only has one pair of underwear, it means that it hasn't touched the clothes she's wearing. His pervy thoughts really are unstoppable. Akutsu-san decides to play around with him even more, asking if he has washed the sweatshirt she is wearing. He is taken aback by this question, as he knows that the shirt looks pretty clean. One day at school, it's lunchtime, when Uyama-kun is on his way to buy lunch when he's called over by someone. He turns around and finds Akutsu-san with her good-for-nothing friends who ask him if he's going to buy lunch. The other girls ask if he can buy bread for them, and demands that she wants melon bread. Uyama is clearly not happy about being treated like a waiter, 
thinking that all he does is get other people's things. He has to take a stand for himself and reject them right here. But of course, he's too scared to say no to them. So he gets their lunch for them, but it looks like Akutsu-san isn't happy with him for helping out her friends. He feels worse now, and he thinks that he's getting a rough treatment at school. Maybe someone should tell him that it could have been a lot worse, and he got off easy. Later in the evening, Akutsu-san is in his room reading her usual manga, when he decides to apologize to her for what happened at school since he feels like she's in a bad mood. Before he can say anything, she calls him and brings up the incident, which makes him wonder if she's mad that he tried to reject her friends. However, her question totally shocks him, as she wants to know why he didn't reject them. It turns out that she was giving him a signal to reject them, which he completely misunderstood. Furthermore, she is really mad that he was being so friendly with those girls. Uyama points out that he didn't think she would be mad, since she's always asking him to get things for her too. He's making a good point here, folks. Akutsu-san reveals that it bothers her when Uyama gets things for other people, but she can't explain why exactly it's bothering her. She wants him to reject them next time, as it's a pain for her when he's the center of attention. Uyama's heart is pounding after hearing her claim him as her own, which is an interesting development. Uyama-kun has caught a cold and has taken a break from school, resting on his bed. Akutsu soon probably knows that he is resting, which means that she might not come today, and he can have a lazy day at home. Being sick and alone is really painful for him, but the bright side is that it's better than Akutsu soon coming over every day. His little vacation doesn't last long, and 10 minutes later, Akutsu-san arrives, declaring that she had no idea he wasn't at school, as she was taking a nap in the nurse's office the whole day. He suggests that she should go home if she doesn't want to catch his cold, but she is ever persistent and wants to stay anyway. This makes him daydream that she might look after him while he's sick, wiping off his sweat and making porridge for him. However, she bursts his little bubble by saying that she won't have to attend school if she catches a cold. This girl is clearly bad news. She's searching how people pass colds while Uyama can only feel stupid about expecting her to look after him. He wants her to go, until she reads out that kissing is the best option for transferring colds. This shocks Uyama, who can't believe that she is actually considering kissing just to catch a cold. Is she this desperate to not attend school? She continues to lean over him, and Uyama knows that she is just trying to fool him once again. Her games never end, as he doesn't want to give her the satisfaction of being flustered. He's right, and Akutsu-san drops the idea of kissing, saying that she might catch a cold if they stay in the same space and she starts playing her video games. Uyama is supposed to take a break from school and rest, but Akutsu-san has ruined it all for him. He desperately needs her to go back home if he ever wants to get better. However, he finds her tugging at him, asking him to take off his clothes. She has brought a bowl, and is wiping his sweat since he is completely drenched in it. Uyama can't believe that she is actually nursing him, wondering if there is something she wants him to do for being so kind. Maybe she'll blackmail him on the internet? He's so scared of getting a bad reputation that he wants her to stop now. She continues to wipe his sweat off, while commenting on the color of his skin, which is a bit inappropriate until he can't take it anymore. Uyama shouts out, asking why she is doing so much for him. Her reason is the same as before, as she reveals that she is hoping to catch his cold if she stays close to him. Besides, she wants him to nurse her when she gets sick as well. This comment makes Uyama's brain draw too many graphic pictures of him wiping away the sweat from her body, and he starts coughing. Akutsu-san guesses that he is probably imagining something lewd, and doesn't seem to care much about it. In the end, she doesn't go back home, but remains energetic throughout the day. Akutsu-san wants to know why Uyama talks so politely, and gets offended that he thinks she is mannerless. Now, she wants him to pay her 100 yen whenever he talks politely. This would mean that Uyama will have to give her all of his life savings. He is charged 100 yen when he adds San to her name, making him wonder if this is a new style of extortion, since she knows that he can't be a delinquent with other girls. He stays quiet for a bit, and Akutsu-san calls it cheating, as staying silent is off-limits in this bed. She really is a demon who enjoys looking at his reactions while taking his money. Maybe he should try to surprise her by talking without any manners, just like she does. So he starts to form a sentence, but is unable to complete it because it's scary and embarrassing for him. She mocks him for being a virgin yet again while collecting his money. She guesses that it's too high a hurdle for him, since he can't talk to girls normally and talking to them like a delinquent is completely out of the question. He defends himself by telling her that he can talk to other girls like a delinquent, just not to her. He has actually dug his own grave, because she might tell him to talk to girls at school the next day. However, her reaction is the opposite of what he expected, as she looks pissed while laying down on the couch. She doesn't go home and sulks the entire time. Akutsu, San, and Uyama are doing some arm wrestling, and she wins twice in a row, which means that she will get two ice creams according to the stakes they had agreed upon. She thinks that he is a weak bean sprout, while he can't actually exert much power because holding her hands is too embarrassing for him. She beats him again, wanting them to move on to some muscle training. However, Uyama doesn't want to do it, as he really doesn't need it. 
Akatsu-san is shocked to hear him deny after she called him weak, a bean sprout, an introvert, and a virgin. Well, these aren't the only names she's mocked him with, but who's counting? She isn't going to listen to his refusal, promising to turn him into a muscular beast with all of her exercising tips. She wants him to start off with a few sit-ups, but their bodies keep touching during the workout session. Meanwhile, Uyama thinks he can actually scare her into going home after he has muscles, getting all the revenge he wants. Suddenly, he gets really enthusiastic and starts doing sit-ups with more effort as he really wants those muscles now. Akutsu-san is impressed after he does one sit-up, however, he doesn't have the energy to do any more. Their muscle training lasts for about 5 minutes until Uyama completely gives up. Akutsu-san has brought over a horror movie to watch today. Uyama isn't impressed since he's not good with horror flicks. He gets happy to see her finally go home when she starts walking towards the door. However, his dreams are crushed when she turns off the lights, really excited about the movie they are about to watch together. It's a bad situation for Uyama, who is not only worried about the movie, but also about what Akutsu-san is going to do. The constant fear is truly overwhelming for him. Suddenly, she starts screaming about how scary the movie is and hugs him from behind. What is this woman planning on doing to him now? She looks really scared, but still finds a way to make him uncomfortable by asking if his heart was pounding because of the movie or because of her. He doesn't say much to her in reply, since she looks genuinely afraid. The movie continues, and Akutsu-san tries to act cool in front of him, making fun of him for being scared until a scary scene appears on screen and she clutches onto him. Furthermore, she makes fun of his reactions whenever she hugs him, but all he can think about is how he wants to protect her when she's scared. Akutsu-san comes over during the weekend, screaming at Uyama to open the door for her. This new pattern is not good news for him, as he just wants to be left alone on the weekends. Maybe he should pretend to be out, but realizes that if he opens the door, he might see Akutsu-san in her casual clothes. This will be a nice change from her uniform, right? He opens the door to find her complaining about her karaoke appointment, which got cancelled. However, he can't help but notice that her outfit is truly hideous. As she lays down on the bed, he is scolding himself for misjudging her casual wear, until she suggests that they should play a game. Looking at his sour attitude, Akutsu-san wraps her arms around him from behind, asking him why he's being such a buzzkill. However, Uyama feels worse than before after she touches him, mostly because of what she's wearing. She starts blushing after he compliments her outfit for fitting so well, and wants to show him the different colors she has in the same outfit. She can be cute when she's happy, while Uyama looks forward to more weekends like this. Akutsu-san still hasn't left when she came over during the weekend. She is lounging on his bed when Uyama hears her frustrated scream when she lost yet another game. She then exclaims that she needs a break and expresses how hungry she is. He offers her some instant noodles, but she reminded him to not eat just that and offered to make him something to eat. As she is buzzing around the kitchen, he is contemplating the intentions of her sudden action. Is she planning a prank or something? A mental image of her pouring a ridiculous amount of Tabasco on his food comes to mind. At that moment, she calls to tell him the food is done. Seeing the plate of fried rice, he realizes that he might just get hospitalized. He can only call it repulsive, and he wonders if he can handle eating it. Right then, she starts talking about how she is often alone at home, and she makes this fried rice. Despite its appearance, she tells him it's edible, and that it is the first time she has made it for someone else. Even though he is still scared to try it, he decides to eat it in one go. Surprisingly, the food is delicious. He compliments her cooking skills and even says that he can eat it for the rest of his life. He tells her he loved it. She blushes upon hearing his words and he notices. He immediately stands up to tell her he meant the fried rice. She then insists that she understood and that there is no need to get so worked up. Still blushing, she tells him that she can make it for him again on the next day off. This only makes him anticipate the next weekend. Today, Akutsu-san came over again and is currently asleep. Uyama was finally free, but then his classmate suddenly shows up, wanting to take a look at his room. He was taken aback panicking at the thought of them seeing her. He quickly covers her with a blanket before they enter. His classmate remarks about the stuff he was hiding, and he insisted it was nothing. When one of them tried to touch it, he threw himself onto the bed, yelling for them to not touch it. That was when Akutsu-san reaches from under the blanket and drags him with her, thinking he wanted to continue their wrestling match. Uyama had to prevent them from seeing her face, so he hugged her from behind while they were still on their knees and leaning on the bed. She is taken aback, blushing due to the suggestive position they are suddenly in. His classmates then take their leave, leaving Uyama relieved that they are not exposed. She asks him to release her, still embarrassed by their position. He apologizes profusely, and she says she understood the situation. She menacingly asks if their memory should be erased, but he insists they didn't notice. As these two continue to spend their time together, it's uncertain where exactly their relationship may go. What does the future hold as they continue to navigate their strange relationship? Uyama just receives a call from home asking him to return for the weekend. He is startled to find Akutsu suddenly appearing behind him, and asking if he was going back to his parents' house. 
She assumes he will stop living alone, and her expression turns gloomy. She begs him not to go home, explaining that she likes this place since there are new manga on release day and snacks that are bought immediately, and also because it is a calming place for her to make fun of him. He realizes that it might be more than just a convenience for her. She turns to leave, and he stops her. He who has been wanting to do exactly that for a long time actually stops her. He clarifies that he's only going home for a short time and that he likes being there with her. Akutsu is embarrassed and says he misunderstood her, that she only likes his place and finds him funny and delusional. When she leaves to go to the toilet, Uyama is horrified at his mistake, and what feelings are leading them. Akutsu is also confused by her feelings, her heart beating fast as she contemplates what he said. She wonders why she feels so excited because of him. It's uncertain where these strange emotions will take them. Akutsu-san is currently reading manga on his bed, and Uyama wonders how she is able to continue coming over despite what happened last time. He has to do something to send her home before she brings it up. Because of what happened, he has become conscious of her. While he is deep in thought, she's trying to get him to retrieve the next volume of the manga series. She starts poking his back to get his attention when he tells her to get it herself. He figures that if he acts coldly, she'll finally go home. Akutsu-san is irritated to hear this from him, so she continues poking his back aggressively, demanding an explanation for his attitude. He is forced to stand up from his place on the bed to escape the attack. However, he can't help but notice that her reactions are different from before. Gentler. Is she conscious of him as well? She suddenly comes up to him, and he is startled by their closeness. She then proceeds to tell him that he's acting weird for a while, and that it's disgusting. She then demands that he get the next volume quickly. He decides that he is totally wrong. As he rushes to get the manga, he tells himself that she is scary, and yet he still thinks she is pretty. Akutsu, on the other hand, is flustered. It turns out she's been being harsh because she's conscious of him too. Uyama wakes in the middle of the night to Akutsu-san laying beside him. He is panicking, and he doesn't know what happened. Since she is ruffled due to sleep, he is seeing things that he's not meant to. He wonders what's up with this Ira manga situation. He recalls going to bed and Akutsu telling him she'll go home after she finishes reading. Yet, she didn't go home. He needs to get away so there would be no misunderstandings. However, he can't move because she has taken his hand hostage. Didn't something like this happen before? He wonders if she has a bad sleeping habit. He successfully gets his hand free, yet it is short-lived when she grasps his hand yet again. Only this time it's worse, since she starts sucking on his fingers. The entire night is a struggle with him trying to stop her. The next morning, Akutsu is marveling at what a good sleep she's had. She notices that she fell asleep at Uyama's place. She approaches the cowering boy to ask him if he stayed up all night. Meanwhile, he is staring at his swollen fingers. Yet again, Akutsu-san came over. This time, she notices that Uyama is cleaning his ear again, even though he just did it yesterday. He explains that it's bothering him for some time now. She then suggests that she set light on it and look at it herself. He wants to refuse, claiming it is dirty, but she instead wants to find out what's wrong. That's how he ends up on her lap, with her telling him not to move. He nervously asks her if she's done this before. When she answers that she has in fact not done it before, he gets even more scared. She plays around first, teasing the shape of his ear. He immediately tells her to quit it. She then starts using the ear pick on him while saying some pretty erotic words. She tells him how deep it is and asks him if it feels amazing feeling it so deep. She then notices that he's shaking. She asks him why he's scared even though he's a man. He confesses that he fears she will hurt him and asks her to be more gentle with him. Somehow, this makes her flustered, causing her to move the ear pick in a certain way, earning a pained yelp from him. The discomfort in his ear was gone. Akutsu-san comes to his house again and tells him she's staying over. She had a fight with her parents and she ran away from home. Uyama asks her why she can't just stay at a friend's house, and she said that they have boyfriends so it would be wrong. She suddenly undresses in front of him, making him flustered. Turns out she's just changing into something more comfortable. Somehow, even though she's stayed here before, he gets excited by this situation. He is about to agree since he assumes that it's only for one night, when she insists that she wouldn't go home for at least a month, showing him the loungewear she bought. His immediate thought is that he wanted to see her wearing them. He started saying how things would not work if she stayed there, especially because of school, but she said that she'll go from there. He then thinks that he didn't know anything in particular about her family situation, and it's probably difficult. He is shocked when she claims a drawer, intending to use it for her underwear and such. He asks her again if she really does intend to stay for a month. She answers him by saying that she has nowhere else to go. He then thinks of the scenario if he turned her down. He instantly worries that she'll get caught by a bad guy if she just walks around at night. Uyama relents and tells her she can stay over. Akutsu-san instantly asks him if the reason he agreed is that he's thinking of erotic stuff. When he admits that he just got worried, she gets flustered and starts stuttering. Suddenly, she gets a call and starts screaming at the person. Turns out it was a call from home. He assumes again that there is something intense going on, only for him to find out that the fight was about her mom eating her ice cream. They made up soon, and she went home.
When Akutu-san came again today, Uyama asks her to take home the stuff she left in his house. She probed him if he means her loungewear and other stuff from when she was about to stay over, her toothbrush and her underwear too. He keeps on answering yes, absentmindedly, and is taken aback with the last item. He swears he forgot that her underwear were there when he opened the drawer. She starts teasing him about it and even suggests he was using the underwear for a certain activity. Uyama, who's extremely flustered, insists that he doesn't do such things. She then proceeds to say that she'll just leave her things there in case she stays over. He, on the other hand, really just wants her to take the stuff and go home. Not yet done with her teasing, Akutu-san even says that she's fine with him using them as long as he washes them. She even tells him that he owes her 500 yen each time he does it. He is taken aback and exclaims that he has never done such a thing. He explains to her that if her things stay here, he won't be able to store his own things. She challenges him that if he can give the underwear to her, she'd take her stuff home. He knows that she is asking for something impossible to piss him off, so he brilliantly sandwiched the underwear between her clothes to avoid touching them. She is shocked and calls him a loser for not touching a piece of cloth. She continues to dig in the drawer, only to fish out a thong. An embarrassed Akutsu quickly snatches the item from him. She is flustered for a moment and she is unable to speak. Faking her laughter, she tells him that she placed those there to make him flustered. She insists that she does not normally wear them. She ended up not taking her stuff home anyway. Akutsu-san came over during the weekend again. Uyama asks her to get out of bed so he can air out the sheets. However, she is firm on not leaving the bed no matter how much he pleads. He tells her that it's good weather to air them out. She tells him that when there's good weather, it means it's time to play. She mocks him for being a shut-in. He thinks to himself that she's one to talk when she's in his room all day. She tells him that he should dry them when she's not there. He thinks that that would be difficult for him since she does not tell him when she will not be there. She continues teasing him even suggesting that if he really wants her to move, he should move her himself, which of course he won't because according to her, he's a virgin who can't touch a girl. Uyama instead tells her that even she would find dirty sheets disgusting. She answers him saying that she doesn't care if the sheets are dirty as long as she can freely roll on them. She even suggests that she knows what he can do on top of the futon, her face showing mischievousness. Changing his tactics, he simply tells her that she's fine with dirty sheets. He'll leave her alone. She protests by saying that she's fine with it because it's Uyama's. Both of them freeze and she instantly regrets what she said. Flustered and embarrassed, she tells him that the sheets really do stink and he should air them out immediately. As they spend time together, more and more things are being revealed between them. Akutsu-san is complaining about how her head is hurting, saying that her parents hit her. Worried, Uyama instantly asks her if she's okay. She explains that her mom flipped out when she ate her ice cream. He is relieved to know that it wasn't a serious fight. She asks him if there's a bump on her head, but he can't see it just by looking. Thinking that he won't actually do it, she tells him to touch it. And yet, he touches her head. In a serious manner, he tells her that her head is a bit swollen. He notices that she started trembling, so he removes his hand, thinking he hurt her. She is shocked that he touched her without hesitation, seemingly doing it out of concern. He starts to leave, saying that he will buy some ice, when she stops him. She asks him to check for a bump again, wanting him to touch her head again. She is confused and doesn't know what's happening, but when he does, she can't believe what she's feeling. Why does being touched by him actually feel good? How will she deal with all these emotions when she's around him? Akutsu-san comes over again, and she is trying to distract him from playing games. Her feet are swung over his shoulders from behind, which makes it hard for Uyama to concentrate. Suddenly, her legs become numb. She can't move, and she insists that he should not move or it will not end up too well. It was not the worst feeling for him, but he can't move either. Suddenly, she wraps her arms around his head when the cramps start getting worse. He tells her that he can't move in this position, becoming more aware of something warm and soft pressing against his head. She pleads for him to stay like that for a while, with a voice that to his horror, he finds sexy. Realizing that Akutsu-san is in a vulnerable state, he decides to take revenge for all the times she's terrorized him. He starts touching her feet to torment her. Surely enough, he gets hit afterwards. Clearly, he did not plan his revenge well. Once again, Akutsu-san is at Uyama's place. She's trying to convince him to let her stay over. However, he tells her that her constant coming over is troubling him. An irritated Akutsu demands to know how exactly she's troubling him. Not being able to stand the constant flapping sound, he tells her to stop what she's doing with her skirt. Turns out, she's been constantly flapping her skirt due to the heat. She insists that he look at her. She tells him that she will really go home if he doesn't turn around to face her. He thinks to himself that if she stays there, he won't be able to relax since she only sees him as her gopher. She then says that she'll do anything if he lets her stay. Immediately upon hearing this, he wants to let her stay. He realized, however, that it's a trap. Unexpectedly, she relents and tells him she'll hang out in someone else's place. He is taken aback, especially when she tells him that she has other places to hang around. A mental image of Akutsu going to some other guy's place horrified him. Instantly, he tells her that he's fine with her staying there. Chuckling, she teases him. 
thinking that he agreed because she said she'll do anything, calling him a pervert. However, she is startled when he starts crawling towards her, reminding her that she said she'll do anything. With a nervous expression, she tries to speak as he comes closer, but she's only able to shriek when he ends up on top of her. However, she did not expect the words he said. He pleads her to not go to another guy's house. After a moment of time just staring at each other, she admits that she's not really close with any other guy, and she met Misaki's place earlier. She then proceeds to tease him about what he said. He is so embarrassed that he actually wants to go home. Uyama worries when a lighter falls out of Akutu-san's pocket while she's in the bathroom. He knows that if the landlord finds out she's smoking, they will both get in trouble. He debates if he should try to get her to stop since she's still a minor. When he steps out of the bathroom, he unexpectedly asks her if he can smell her. In his defense, he was trying to find out if she smokes and utter those words without thought. She is confused and fortunately he's able to ask her about the lighter normally. She explains that it's her mom's and she has no idea why it's on her. She proceeds to tease him, saying that if he doubts she doesn't smoke, he can still smell her. He explains that he only meant that smoking is bad for her health and worries that it may endanger any future children she has. He quickly backtracks, embarrassed by what he said. She is surprised and embarrassed by his words. Uyama immediately backtracks, saying that he means in the future after she's married or something. An embarrassed Akutsu went to the bathroom imagining various things. Akutsu is fuming as she complains about being called out by her teacher for her inappropriate appearance. She wonders what is so wrong with her look. She has blonde hair and piercings and wasn't even wearing the school uniform. Uyama, trying to explain, accidentally said that everything about her is inappropriate. This makes her even angrier and she accuses him of making fun of her. He quickly corrects himself, saying that he meant her hair and piercings. Akutsu then jokingly asks Uyama if he prefers black-haired serious girls. This makes him think of Akutsu with black hair, looking prim and proper. He replies that it depends on the person and that he personally likes her the way she is. Akutsu was taken aback by his words and blushes, accusing him of saying something gross. Uyama panics and apologizes, trying to explain that he means he likes girls like her. Akutsu couldn't understand why his words make her happy. The next day, the teacher demands to know why Akutsu hadn't changed her appearance. As always, Akutsu is in his room. He's drinking from a can when he realized that he's drinking from Akutsu-san's can. Flustered, he apologizes and tells her he will wipe it off. She notices his embarrassment and teases him about it. He wonders if he's being that obvious. She asks for the drink back, but he refuses. He offers to buy her a new can instead. Yet, she insists, telling him that she does not mind indirect kisses since she's not a five-year-old. Uyama thinks about how he's overthinking it. Without fail, she starts teasing him, exclaiming how he's stealing her lips. Irritated, he reminds her of what she just said about not being a five-year-old. She starts licking the opening of the can, which makes him even more flustered. He tries getting the can from her. She continues mocking him, claiming that only virgins care about indirect kisses. He accidentally bumped into her head, causing his lips to touch her face. He apologizes to her, explaining that he was only reaching for the can. Again, she chooses to mock him, saying that he forcefully kissed her. He immediately starts explaining that he simply bumped into her. Incredibly flustered, he leaves to buy a new can of juice. Turns out, it was the first time a boy has kissed her. How many secrets will be revealed about Akutsu? Will their shaky friendship remain just that, or will it lead to something more? Akutsu-san comes in late one evening. She explains that she was at a karaoke bar and proceeds to tell him that she was groped on her way there. He is shocked and instantly demands if she's okay. She tells him it's not a big deal. He wonders if she even reported the incident to the police. Akutsu is still a girl and can be easily overpowered. She then tells him that she gave the guy a good kick, right in the balls. However, he tells her that she should stop coming over if it's too late, insisting that it's dangerous. She tells him that she'll be fine and that she's not a kid anymore. He explains that he's only worried about it if it was something worse that she ran into. This angers her, telling him that she can fight them off on her own. She was taken aback when he took her by the shoulder, and he tells her that he won't let a cute girl wander around at night alone. He will pick her up when she comes late and take her home if it's late. Flustered, she tells him she will start calling him from now on. Uyama pulls out his phone to report the incident to the police, while a blushing Akutsu thinks about how he called her cute. Their relationship is gradually shifting. How much longer can they pretend otherwise? Akutsu is in a bad mood, and Uyama is debating whether to ask her about it when she starts talking on her own about some girls going to the sea for the summer holiday. She's upset because she thought she's too fat. To prove her point, she lifts her shirt to show her stomach and pulls out her phone to show a picture of her wearing a two-piece swimsuit from last year. Uyama is surprised by the photo, but admits that she was more toned last year. She declares that the only option is to go on a diet. When Uyama questions why he must go on the diet too, she says it's because he cannot bear to see him eating candy. She leans on him from the back and promises that if he participates, they will choose her swimsuit together. Uyama decides to go along because he has also gained weight, and Akutsu is wondering why she made a promise of picking out the swimsuit together. It seems like their relationship is progressing in a strange way. The moment Akutsu-san saw the cat, she immediately shrieks in happiness. The landlady left it there for the day. He learns that day that she likes cats. The cat is cute, and she asks him what's her name. When she found out that the cat's name is Rico, the same as her name, 
The inevitable teasing started. She insists that he call the cute cat by its name. He exclaims that if she knows he's embarrassed, she should stop messing with him. Why do they have to have the same name? She still made him say the name, so he gave in and said the name. As expected, Akutsu responds to the name even though it's the cat that he called. He realizes that he can use the cat to call out Akutsu's name as much as possible. When she says the cat is cute, he responds by saying that Riko is indeed cute. He takes the cat and continues to talk to it. As he walks away and focuses on the cat, Akutsu is becoming even more flustered as she hears her name being used affectionately for a cat. Why is she constantly feeling this way because of him? It is an incredibly hot day, and Akutsu-san is complaining about the temperature and her sweating. She asks Uyama if the AC is still broken. He tells her that the AC guy will come tomorrow. Uyama is flustered as Akutsu-san's legs are spread apart. Suddenly, he smells a pleasant odor, which is a combination of sweat and something else. He finds the smell to be erotic and feminine. Akutsu-san notices that he is covering his face and assumes he is mocking her smell. She gets mad and forces his face towards her armpits. He thinks that this is bad. The fragrance is making his head spin. He pleads with her that he's had enough, but to no avail. He feels his consciousness slipping. Akutsu is startled when a clearly not so conscious Uyama exclaimed that he loves her smell so much that he wants to smell her forever. Embarrassed, she asks him what he's saying. She asks if he was kidding. When he suddenly hugs her, she panics and tells him to stop sniffing her. She exclaims that she will kill him, so he better let go. After that, he lost consciousness. Akutsu is holding a bag of chips when she asks the unsuspecting Uyama to open it. He tells her to open it herself. She exclaims that it's stuck. She adds that she thinks he's looking strong lately. At first, she thought that it won't work because flattery is too obvious, but to her surprise, it does. He opens the bag of chips, saying that he really doesn't have a choice. She realized that the compliment raised his spirit. Boys are like that, she thought. Give them a little praise and it will make them proud. It's simple, yet effective, and she wonders how far she can push it. She tells him that she needs to go to the toilet and asks him to carry her. He was confused at first, but she started complimenting him again. She tells him that it will be easy for him because of his strength. She even adds that he looked cool. After hearing all that, he confidently lifts her up with his arms. She tells him how impressive he is while thinking about how hilarious the situation is. She is, however, genuinely impressed, as she did not think that he will be able to hold her up. That is, when she notices that he is in fact struggling to hold her. He was trembling, and she is incredulous as to how he is tired already. She tries to convince him to let her down because she needs to use the toilet, but he insists that he is perfectly fine, clearly wanting more praises. They argue back and forth with her wanting to be put down and him wanting to carry her. They stayed like that for five minutes. She keeps on pleading with him to put her down because she needs to pee. She barely makes it in time, and she learns to never mess with him in this way again. While they are in school sitting in their classroom, Misaki, Yuoko, and Akutsu-san are having a conversation. Misaki suddenly tells Akutsu that she hasn't been hanging around with them even though they used to do so all the time. Uyama, who's sitting not far away from them, overhears the conversation. He wonders if she can handle the situation without revealing that she's been hanging around at his place. To both their surprise, Yuoko mentions that she saw Akutsu entering someone's house. She then proceeds to speculate if it was a boy's house. The conversation is clearly taking a bad turn. A shocked Misaki immediately asks if she was seeing someone. Akutu-san, who's clearly flustered, is having trouble answering their questions. Uyama is equally agitated, for even though she promised him that she would keep quiet about his room, he still worries she'll be fine. As her friends continue on badgering her with questions, wanting to meet the guy she's been seeing, she is able to see them with a firm no. Misaki then immediately asks why not. They have an intense stare-off for a moment before the argument breaks out. Her friends keep on insisting that it's not a big deal to meet him. She tells them that they can't because he's gross and that his place stinks. Her astonished friends instantly ask why she talks like that about her boyfriend. She firmly denies that he's her boyfriend. Uyama, on the other hand, is relieved that she's avoiding talking about his room, but thinks that she's being a bit harsh. That is when Yuoka says that she probably doesn't want them to intrude on their love nest. Akutsu, who's in the middle of arguing with Misaki, is even more shocked by her comment, especially when her friends elaborates by saying she was practically beaming before entering the house. She denies it even more, and demands to know how long her friend was watching her. Her friends tease her by stating that she doesn't want them to disturb her flirting time. Akutsu clarifies that he is not her boyfriend and she is not even into him. But at the last minute, with her face looking red as a tomato, she adds that she doesn't dislike him either. Her friends immediately conclude that she really is into him. As the group of friends continue to have their conversation with Akatsu, saying that she will not let them tag along, Uyama feels his heart beating faster than normal. He is affected by what she was saying and wonders if she forgot he was sitting near them. Once again, Akutsu-san is in his room. She is loudly complaining about how bored she is. She demands that Uyama entertain her. He then tells her that if she's so bored, why doesn't she just go home? This pissed her off, and she swipes her fingers across his chest. That's when a moan suddenly erupts from him, which makes them both freeze. With a troubled expression, she asks him what that was. He is clearly flustered and is unable to answer properly. Turns out, she got him right at the nipple. 
When he recovered, he exclaimed that he was just surprised. She started teasing him about having sensitive nipples. He starts denying that instantly and asks her to stop staring at them. He elaborates that it was just sudden and that anyone would react like that. She continues mocking him and tells him that she is pretty sure that her nipples can take more than that and that he's just weak. Embarrassed, he asks her what she's even saying. She challenges him so that they should check if his nipples are sensitive or not, even adding that she would love to hear that voice again. He burst out saying that he still doesn't know what she means. She suddenly approaches him with the intention of touching his nipples. He panics and backs away frantically. He begs her to stop and that he's had enough. When he suddenly grasped at her breast, she let out a loud moan. She immediately explains that she was just surprised. He's flustered, thinking of how erotic that was. Hiding her embarrassment, she tells him that the reaction is normal after all. She even teases him by saying that he touched her butt, although she is clearly thinking about how tingly she felt. He starts apologizing, saying that it's also her fault. As it turns out, both of them are quite weak. Akutsu-san has been in Uyama's place since yesterday. When she wakes up, she has a cold. She is clearly frustrated, saying that why would it have to be today? He observes that she is a lot scarier when she has a cold. He tells her she should rest, but she refuses. She complains about being sweaty, and he responds by offering to get her a towel. However, she asks him to wipe her back himself, saying that she's done it for him before. He tells her that he would do it, but she doesn't have to undress. As expected, she teases him by asking him if her back makes him excited. He relents and wipes her off instantly. She fell asleep eventually, and he thinks that she looks feverish. He decides to buy her a cold compress. Suddenly, she wakes up, and her hand clutches the back of his shirt. He apologizes if she woke her up, but she only has to ask him where he's going. When he replies that he's going to the drugstore, she asks him not to leave her. He is beyond surprised when she claims that she'll be lonely. He realizes that this is what Nicole does to her, and he instinctually wants to take care of her. She hugs him tight and asks him to sleep with her instead. He's conflicted at first, but he gives in eventually. He hugs her back and tells her that he will stay with her until her cold is gone. When she wakes up with the cold gone, she is flustered and horrified at what the cold did to her. When she wakes up with the cold gone, she is flustered and horrified with what the cold did to her. She wakes up with him hugging her tightly, debating if she should wake him up or not. In the end, he sleeps for six more hours. Akutsu-san is worried. Uyama is out of juice, and it shouldn't take him this long. He even left his wallet and phone, so there's no way to call him. She's going to wrestle him when he comes back. It's been 40 minutes, and he still hasn't returned. She is becoming even more worried. She thinks that it's weird that he's gone this long when the vending machine is right there. She thinks back on how harshly she treated him today, asking him to buy another juice since he bought the wrong one. She thinks that perhaps he decided to leave, but he wouldn't do that, right? She decides to go outside and look for him. When she arrives at the vending machine, there is no sign of him. She looks around for him, yet there is no sign of him anywhere. Suddenly, there was a call from behind her. Uyama suddenly appeared from behind her. He asks her why she's outside. Confused, she asks him where he's been without his wallet. He explains that he went looking for the juice she wants. The store is far away, so he took a while. She's quiet for a while. Then she tells him she's sorry and grabs his hand. He's astonished by her sudden action. He asks her if she's crying. She denies it, even with a blushing face. He tells her that they should go inside. They make their way inside while she's still holding his hand. He wonders if she was worried about him. Akutsu-san feels unusually nervous in his room. She notices that Uyama is getting to him. She stares at him intensely. Meanwhile, he feels intense pressure from her stares. She admits that he's a good guy and she doesn't dislike him to start, but she's been thinking about him too much. He suddenly calls her. With a red face, she answers him. He tells her to fix her skirt. Looking down, she notices that her underwear are exposed. She's still thinking about why her heart is racing too much around him. She decides to tease him instead about how she's wearing her favorite underwear. She attempts to show them to him, but she's suddenly hit by too much embarrassment. She's flustered even though she's done this before. When he notices that she suddenly stopped moving, he asks her why she's trembling and what's wrong with her. He even asks her if she still has a cold. She denies still having a cold while blushing hard. He touches her face and says that her face is red. They stare at each other for a moment. Suddenly, she utters the word love out of nowhere. Both of them are shocked by what she just said. She instantly clarifies that she meant he loves her underwear and even suggests that he's sad he didn't see them. He tells her that he's not sad, he's just worried she still has a cold. She just teased him more, but she felt even more embarrassed. Out of nowhere, she tells him that she wants to sleep and that he should not talk to her. While Uyama is confused by her actions, fell asleep feeling embarrassed. Akutsu-san has been standing in front of Uyama's door for some time now. Turns out she's embarrassed to enter his room all of a sudden. She recalls saying that and reassures herself that she was able to make up an excuse for that. She is so embarrassed she wants to sink to the floor. She tells herself that she does not love him. She decides that she will act as usual. She is about to reach for the doorknob when Uyama opens it. He asks her why she hasn't come in since she's been out there for a while. 
Not being able to speak, she sneaks past him into the room and slams the door behind her. He starts knocking at the door because she locked him outside. He asks her to open the door while she leans against the door trying to sort out her feelings. Sometime later, while she's under the covers, still embarrassed, he asks her what is wrong with her. Even though she's able to enter the room, she is still quite nervous. How will she be able to handle her feelings? Kutsu's heart races as she tries to maintain her composure in front of Uyama. She's determined to meet his gaze confidently, vowing not to look away this time. However, as she's about to look at him, her cheeks flush, and she quickly averts her eyes, leaving Uyama confused. Frustration wells up within her as she scolds herself for acting like an innocent maiden. Uyama notices her odd behavior and asks if everything is alright. Her blush deepens, but she forces herself to meet his eyes, trying to appear assertive as she insists that everything is fine. She challenges him, demanding to know if what he said earlier is true. In the midst of her internal struggle, Akutsu wonders when Uyama learned to maintain eye contact, as he used to shyly look away all the time. However, now he stares back at her, scratching his face in confusion. The intensity of his gaze unnerves her, and she tells him to stop staring, determined not to falter due to her nerves. While Akutsu pushes herself not to avert her gaze, Uyama remains perplexed by her reaction. He later explains to her that he started maintaining eye contact while talking to people because she had mentioned it. He acknowledges that she had a point and made the effort to learn it properly. He also senses that Akutsu has something on her mind, making him even more attentive to her words and actions. Feeling a surge of determination, Akutsu suddenly flaps her coat, prompting Uyama to glance down at her chest unintentionally. He quickly looks away, and Akutsu believes she has won the battle of eye contact by not looking away. In the end, amidst their awkward yet endearing interaction, both Akutsu and Uyama are grappling with their feelings and navigating their evolving dynamic. As they continue to grow closer, their interactions are filled with heartwarming moments, misunderstandings, and the charming awkwardness of two individuals trying to understand their emotions and each other. As Akutsu enters the room, she notices Uyama handing money to a girl and immediately questions if it's some kind of extortion. Uyama denies it, explaining that the girl is actually the landlady's daughter, Uya Oi, who has come to collect the rent. Curiosity gets the better of Uya, and she teasingly asks if Akutsu is Uyama's girlfriend. Both Akutsu and Uyama are taken aback by the question, quickly clarifying that they are just classmates. Uya then brings up a noise complaint that some people have made, stating that they have trouble falling asleep because of it. Despite Uyama's reassurance that it's probably just noise from another room, Uya warns him that if they continue to receive complaints, she will have no choice but to ask him to move out. Akuchi tries to explain that they are not even dating and that she only comes to the room to play games and relax, while Uyama buys her drinks. However, Uya remains unconvinced, pointing out the regularity of her visits and stays overnight. Finally, Uya leaves the room, seemingly convinced of her suspicions about Akutsu and Uyama's relationship. It becomes evident that Uya may have a crush on Akutsu as she finds her cute and likens her to a character from a love comedy manga. Pure and innocent, a type of person she's only seen in fictional stories. Back at home, Uya excitedly tells her mother that she doesn't mind helping out with the rent collection again, revealing her genuine interest in love comedies. She appears to be fully immersed in the intriguing and somewhat amusing relationship between Akutsu and Uyama, being pulled into the captivating tale of their interactions and feelings for each other. As Uya unintentionally becomes a spectator and supporter of Akutsu and Uyama's connection, little does she know that her involvement will lead to unexpected and heartwarming moments between the two, weaving a charming love story amidst the everyday life of high school students. Akutsu can't help but raise her voice as she bombards Uyama with questions about the game that she's playing. Hikulki reminds her to keep it down, fearing that Uya will get mad at them again. Curious about the game, she asks if it's the one with the scary face. Uyama shares that he and Uya cross paths again, and he reiterates that she's actually a lovely person. Akutsu becomes more inquisitive, wanting to know what they talked about. Uyama explains that they discussed when she usually comes over, leaving Akutsu wondering why Uya needs to know that detail. In her mind, Akutsu starts to suspect that Uya might have feelings for Uyama and imagines the two having fun when she's not around. Despite claiming to have no interest in Uyama, she starts to feel annoyed by the situation. As the evening progresses, Uyama advises her to head home since it's getting late. Akutsu begins to think that Uya might be watching them, waiting for her to leave so she can swoop in. Refusing to go home just yet, she sits closer to Uyama, feeling extremely annoyed, and resumes playing video games. In this somewhat comical and awkward situation, Akutsu's emotions are getting the best of her. The playful tension between the trio adds a touch of humor to their interactions, making the dynamic between Akutsu, Uyama, and Uya all the more intriguing and entertaining. They're sitting too close to each other, and Akutsu can't focus on her game because her arms are stuck together. She notices Uyama trembling and nervous. Seeing Uyama nervous makes Akutsu a little happy. She grins and thinks that it's a chance to get back at him, since he's been getting carried away lately. When he's about to sit, she suddenly grabs his hands and puts it in her chest. This makes him really nervous and tells her that his hand is touching her. Then she hugs him from behind as she rubs her chest against him. Uyama asks her if she's doing it on purpose, and she replies that just a touch of boob is enough to get him excited. But in her mind, she's more excited than he is. He says that in the history of everything that's ever touched his back, it's the very best thing by a mile. And she replies that indeed he got excited and gross. Furthermore, Uyama grabs her from behind and rides her. 
he begins to rub her fingers and her entire body. A creaking sound from the bed and other noises are heard out loud. Meanwhile, Uya is outside behind the door, listening to all those noises inside and having a green mind. She thinks she's right that the two were dating after hearing the noises, but Uya just happened to be passing by. Uyama just finished his shower, and Akutsu is at the karaoke, so it's one of the rare days when he can relax. He forgets his towel, so he steps out of the bathroom naked, but suddenly, Akutsu arrives. He's surprised and begins covering his private parts with both hands. She tells him that the karaoke got cancelled, so she came, but unexpectedly witnessed him naked. He explains that he forgot his towel and asks her to get it instead, so he'll just wait in the bathroom. He can't open the bathroom door since his hands are covering his private parts. But because Akutsu kind of wants to see Uyama's private parts, instead of getting the towel, she begins to take a photo of him laughing evilly, thinking it's going to be good blackmail material. Meanwhile, Uyama's begging her to stop and just get the towel, but she continues. Later, Uyama had enough and resisted getting the phone from her, but suddenly he slips and accidentally grabs her down. Akutsu is kneeling in front of him while his hands are holding Akutsu's shoulders. Both of their worlds stopped at that moment. Akutsu yells while looking at him. She's shaking. Meanwhile, Uya sneaks through the door and witnesses what happens. A lot of progress, she exclaims. Akutsu fainted upon seeing Uyama's stuff. Uya reassured him, understanding the situation and telling him there's no need to call an ambulance. Instead of answering his question, she asked if they were not really dating, leaving Uyama confused. Later, Uya suggested he perform a mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, excited to witness the rom-com trope in reality. Akutsu pretended to be unconscious again when Uya mentioned mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, observing her with curiosity. As Uya prepared, Akutsu teased her, wondering if she's getting turned on by the idea of Uyama giving her mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. Despite the awkward situation, Uyama agreed to do it to help Akutsu. However, before the act, Akutsu got up and called him a pervert for trying to kiss her. Uyama explained it was for mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, but Uya had already left. After ensuring Akutsu was okay, Uyama expressed regret for missing the chance to perform mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. Akutsu blushed as she looked at the photo, and Uyama desperately begged her to delete it while calling her name, unaware that Uya overheard everything. As Akutsu lies lazily in bed, she contemplates the idea of buying a notebook for her Japanese class. Uyama curiously asks her why she needs one, and she explains that her teacher got upset with her for not having a notebook. She casually mentions that she hasn't bought a single one since high school started. Uyama finds this a bit puzzling and questions why she hasn't bought a notebook yet, especially since the first semester is almost over. He playfully asks her what she even goes to school for, to which she replies with a silly face, to sleep. Akutu nonchalantly says that she can't be bothered and contemplates spending the lesson in the infirmary instead. However, Uyama comes to her rescue and offers her a spare notebook he has. He warns her to attend the lessons properly, otherwise she might have to repeat the year. Upon receiving the notebook, Akutsu observes it, realizing it's the first time she's received something from a boy. She wonders if she should be happy about it, but quickly dismisses the thought, thinking it's no big deal since it's only from Uyama. She thanks him, saying she's happy she won't have to waste time buying a notebook. That's all. Later, while Uyama is in the bathroom, Akutsu notices his last name written on the notebook. A mischievous idea crosses her mind, and she quickly writes her name next to his, even adding a heart. As she gazes at what she's done, she starts feeling a bit nervous about her actions. When Uyama returns, he realizes he forgot to erase his name on the notebook, but Akutu doesn't hand it back to him. Instead, she tells him to let her do the erasing and decides to keep the notebook in her bag, wanting to cherish this small, unexpected gift from him. As she lays in bed, she finds herself thinking about Uyama and the notebook. Little did she know that this simple act would set off a chain of thoughts and emotions, sparking a newfound excitement and curiosity about her feelings for him. From that moment on, the dynamic between Akutsu and Uyama takes on a different tone, as they both become more aware of each other's presence and gestures. Each small interaction, whether intentional or accidental, leaves a lasting impression on both of them, slowly weaving their hearts together in a sweet and tender romance. Uya arrives with a cat named Riko and asks Akutsu and Uyama to watch over her. Despite her initial fear of the cat's scary appearance, Akutsu finds herself drawn to the desire to pet Riko. Uya asks if Akutsu doesn't like cats, but Uyama responds that she actually loves them and was all over the cat the last time they took care of her. Uya then asks Uyama if he knows the cat's name, to which he replies yes, but he quietly admits that it's a bit awkward since the cat's name is the same as Akutsu's name, Riko. Akutsu overhears Uyama mentioning her name and feels her cheeks turning red. Uya, being a bit playful, urges Uyama to say Akutsu's name out loud. Akutsu covers her ears, feeling embarrassed and flustered by the situation. Uya finds it amusing and thinks that having the cat and Akutsu share the same name will create some entertaining rom-com material as she pets Riko, the cat. Observing the interactions between Akutsu and Riko, the cat, Uya can't help but comment on how cute Akutsu is, or rather, how cute Riko is. She playfully teases that the scene when they started calling each other by their given names has yet to come. After some playful banter, Uya eventually leaves, entrusting Riko, the cat, to Akutsu's care. For that day, Riko becomes the unexpected bridge that saves the two of them from the awkwardness of the situation. As they spend time with the adorable feline, they may not realize it yet, but Riko's presence is bringing them closer together, creating new moments for their hearts to connect. 
As the temperature rises, Akutu decides to wear short sleeves, and Ayama can't help but admire her in the new uniform. Seeing her with her hair tied into a ponytail adds to her cuteness, and Ayama finds himself amazed, as he had only seen her with her hair down before. He compliments her, calling her super cute, but when Akutu questions what he's staring at, he tries to brush it off as nothing and mentions that she just looks different. Curious, Akutsu removes the ponytail, and Ayama can't help but react, telling her not to take it off because it suits her very well. She puts the ponytail back on, dismissing his compliment and claiming that it's nothing special. Uyama, however, insists that it does suit her a lot, and finds the change from her usual appearance fresh and exciting. He even finds the back of her neck visible and the ponytail appealing, but this embarrasses Akutsu, causing her to cover her neck and tell him not to stare. Uyama starts to panic, realizing he might have crossed a line and possibly harassed her unintentionally. He apologizes and assures her he won't look again and that she should keep the ponytail. Akutsu teases him for calling her sexy, and Uyama admits to speaking his mind without realizing the implications of his words. The two share an awkward moment, but their playful banter and sincere interactions continue to create more lighthearted and humorous situations between them. As Akutsu cleans her ear, she starts to remember the time she did the same thing to Uyama in the past. Curiosity strikes her, and she wonders how it would feel if he were the one cleaning her ears. It's not about Uyama specifically, she's just genuinely curious about the sensation of having someone clean her ears. Uyama is engrossed in his phone when Akutsu playfully calls for his attention, teasing him about wanting him to clean her ears and putting something in them. The innocent way he moves his fingers catches her attention, and she finds herself getting more curious about the experience. Nervous and unsure about what Akutsu means, Uyama asks her to clarify, and she admits that she was talking about ear cleaning. When he notices the ear cleaning stick next to her, he realizes what she meant. Akutsu is taken aback that he noticed it, but she pretends it has nothing to do with her ears and teases him about his ear cleaning fetish. Uyama playfully goes along with her teasing, acting like he's desperately begging to clean her ears. Akutsu humorously agrees, saying it's his last ditch effort to convince her. Eventually, she lies on his lap and he cleans her ear. The feeling is entirely different and she enjoys it immensely. Uyama compliments her ear and the experience leaves a lasting impression on Akutsu. From that moment on, she realizes that her body will never enjoy ear cleaning from anyone else quite like this again. Their playful and slightly flirtatious banter continues to deepen their bond, creating more endearing moments between the two. Uya arrives with some food and hands it to Uyama, explaining that her mom made too much so she decided to share it with him. She finds herself pondering whether she should stop actively involving herself in their relationship, as she wants to watch over them but doesn't necessarily have to intervene. Uyama takes a bite of the food, enjoying it, but Akutsu appears visibly upset. She thinks he should react differently and grabs the food from him, declaring how awful it tastes and comparing it to her grandma's old socks. Uyama finds her reaction rude and tries to defend the food. Uya observes the scene, and finds herself feeling a sense of happiness from witnessing their interactions. She wishes for Akutsu to live there forever without paying rent, just so she can continue to watch their antics. Uyama calls out to Uya, asking why she's standing at the door and not coming in. She playfully responds that she, a mere mortal, should not intrude into their sacred territory, jokingly referring to their room. She then mentions that she'll pick up the bowl later. Akutsu seeks cooking advice from Uya, who considers it for a moment and suggests they start right away. Akutsu hesitates and suggests they do it another day. Despite that, their interactions have brought them closer, and their friendship continues to grow in this fun and heartwarming atmosphere. In the classroom, the teacher asks Uyama to wake up Akutsu, and someone in the class jokingly remarks if the teacher is afraid of waking her up herself, since Akutsu supposedly reacts violently to anyone attempting to do so, except for Uyama. Later, Uyama tries to wake Akutsu up by shaking her, as he would at home. Suddenly, Akutsu awakens and kicks him. She sternly tells him not to talk to her at school, to which he responds that it happened unintentionally. Uyama feels genuinely frightened by Akutsu's reaction, realizing how scary she can be sometimes. Akutsu then shows him her phone, expressing concern about everyone making fun of her. She worries about facing school the next day. In her half-asleep state, Akutsu is more open and at home, but her anger and frustration are still evident. She's convinced that Misaki, likely her friend, took the embarrassing video of her. She contemplates drastic solutions like dropping out to avoid the embarrassment. Blaming Uyama for the situation, Akutsu expresses her anger, but Uyama apologizes and promises never to wake her up at school again, though he knows it's too late to fix the situation. Uyama talks to himself about wanting to protect Akutsu's cute side from the other guys. Akutsu overhears and angrily tells him that she's not cute and that she won't forgive him just for calling her cute. As the next day arrives, everyone receives the video, including Uyama. Akutsu asks him to delete it, and she ensures that everyone deletes their copies of the video. Despite the embarrassment, their friendship remains strong as they navigate the challenges and humor of their everyday lives. Once again, Akutsu finds herself in Uyama's room, as if it's now a natural part of her daily routine. This time, she notices something different about him. He seems uncomfortable. Concerned and curious, she decides to ask him what happened. Without hesitation, Uyama shares his recent experience. Some guys at school wanted to wake Akutsu up to see if she would react as cute as she did when Uyama woke her up. Before they could approach her, Uyama stepped in and intervened, which resulted in him getting beaten up. 
The idea of Uyama protecting her fills Akutsu with admiration, causing her cheeks to blush. She pictures him as a brave knight in shining armor, although he might not have appeared that way in reality. Regardless, she keeps her thoughts to herself. Trying to hide her blushing, Akutsu playfully teases him, asking why he felt the need to stop them when she could have handled the situation herself. She even suggests that maybe he didn't want other guys to wake her up for some reason. However, Uyama remains unresponsive, leaving her demanding an answer. Finally, he decides to reveal the truth. Those men had ulterior motives. Akutsu is left dumbfounded and flushed. She remembers that what he said the other day about not wanting others to see her cute side, and now it's evident he's willing to get hurt for her sake. Instead of showing her flustered self, she starts teasing him, finding it lame to be protected by someone weak. This might have made him feel small, prompting him to apologize, but Akutsu isn't finished expressing herself, her gratitude. Softly, she thanks him while patting him, a departure from her usual teasing and dominant demeanor. He's shocked by her unexpected behavior, and she's stunned as well, because it wasn't what she intended. Stammering, she tries to save face by claiming she's just checking his band-aid. In the midst of making excuses, she musters up the courage to tell him that no one else is allowed to wake her up at school except him. Through that, she's letting him know that they can now interact with each other in school. Another day of bothering Uyama begins for Akutsu as she enters his room and finds him struggling to reach his itchy back. Without delay, she offers help, but is it genuine assistance she's offering? Being her usual self, Akutsu doesn't help right away. Instead, she teases him first. Playfully, she slides her fingers and makes circles around his back, making it even itchier. When he can't take it anymore, she stops and asks where the itchy spot is, but that doesn't mean she'll properly help this time. After all, teasing Uyama is too much fun. To provide better access, Uyama takes off his shirt, which flusters Akutsu. Memories flood back, embarrassing ones of when she saw him fully naked. She becomes too shy to move or speak, and her teasing plan backfires as she can't bring herself to touch him now. Uyama notices her hesitation and calls out to her, which startles her, leading her to scratch his back recklessly. When she finishes, he puts his shirt back on and thanks her, but Akutsu is too preoccupied, feeling perverted by her own thoughts. As they walk side by side towards Uyama's house, it's a normal routine for the two. Akutsu usually asks if he got a new manga, however, their normality is disrupted when they hear a familiar voice. To their surprise, it's Akutsu's friends approaching them. She freezes on the spot, unable to move. Her friends start questioning why they are together as they get closer. Masaki, one of Akutsu's friends, recognizes Uyama's house from the other day when they saw Akutsu leaving. Feeling nervous and as if she is caught red-handed, Akutsu starts rambling, attempting to create a perfect alibi. She explains that Uyama is just her errand boy and she hangs out at his place instead. Misaki connects the dots and understands that Akutsu's cuteness around Uyama makes sense now. To confirm her suspicions, she playfully teases Akutsu, saying that they also want to hang out at Uyama's place. As expected, Akutsu denies the idea and even speaks negatively about Uyama, calling his room ugly and dirty. To test their friend's denial further, Misaki and the others step close to Uyama, clinging onto him, trying to convince him to let them hang out at his place, just like he does with Akutsu. The girls persistently try to persuade Uyama, even going as far as to offer to do naughty things with him. He's beyond flustered and pleads for Akutsu's help. While Akutsu stands there watching, she can't help but feel consumed with jealousy. Unable to bear it any longer, Akutsu shouts, catching everyone off guard. She yells that Uyama is hers alone. Realizing what she said, she starts rambling to defend herself, claiming she's not jealous and that he's her exclusive errand boy. Her two friends are also flustered by her outburst, but satisfied with the revelation of how serious Akutsu is, even though she denies it. They wish happiness for the two and hastily leave before Akutsu can do anything. Now alone, neither of them can look at each other, especially Uyama, who is still fazed by Akutsu's words. He's rooted to the ground and unable to speak. Akutsu wonders if her friends caused him trauma, but in reality, his mind is simply filled with thoughts of her. The two are reading manga at Uya's place, and Akutsu borrowed a rom-com manga from Uya. Although it's unexpected, Akutsu is surprisingly engrossed in it, despite initially ranting about how it doesn't suit her taste for violence and action. As she reads, she becomes addicted to the manga, and thoughts of Uyama start filling her mind. She wonders what it would be like to date him and quickly dismisses the idea, taking a pause from reading. However, she can't help herself and picks up the book again, this time imagining romantic scenarios with Uyama, blushing as she does so. In a trance, she envisions innocent dates, shopping together, lovingly feeding each other ice cream, and even having intimate moments and a family together. Lost in her thoughts, she becomes unresponsive to Uya, who tries to engage her and ask about the manga. Unaware of the extent of her own effectiveness, Uya hopes her strategies are working, but little does she know that they are even more powerful than she imagined. Akutsu enters the apartment once more, and Uya stops her, asking if she could give him the mail since she's going to his room. In the mail, she discovers that it's Uyama's birthday, a fact confirmed by the landlady's daughter, who suggests that he'd be happy to receive a gift. Entering his room like an owner, Akutsu hands him the mail and mentions his birthday. Before he can respond, she starts teasing him about not getting any presents, though she secretly got him something. Overthinking the situation, she wonders if it's normal to buy a cake for someone's birthday and how to give it to him, which leads her to tease him even more. 
This puts Uyama in a foul mood, causing him to slump onto the bed. And that's when a cake falls from a plastic, surprising him. True to her nature, Akutsu can't simply give it to him. Instead, she takes the cake and claims it's not for him, she bought it for herself. She continues to feed him this facade, pitying him for not receiving any gifts and offers to take the cake for him, pretending it's just an act of kindness. Despite claiming to give the cake out of pity, Uyama appreciates the jester so much. He's used to being the one who gives her gifts and now it's the other way around. Though Akutsu thinks her lie is going smoothly, it's clear that it's not. Seeing how happy he is with the simplest present makes her blush. The thought of him being happy on his next birthday brings her joy as well. She contemplates giving him a proper gift next year, but the thought slips out and he hears it. To hide her embarrassment, she teases him once again, saying he must be thrilled to celebrate his day with a girl. But his mind is focused on her plans for next year, and the thought overwhelms him with happiness. His heart is about to burst at the idea of her doing something special for him. Today, Akutsu looks different from her usual teasing self. She's beaming with happiness. The cause? Summer holidays are starting tomorrow. She can't contain her excitement, and Uyama can clearly see it. He tries to remind her to calm down, but she's unstoppable, enthusiastically listing all the things she wants to do during the break. Despite her radiant energy, Uyama appears gloomy beside her. Akutsu notices the dull aura around him and asks why. Without hesitation, he confesses that a summer without her would be lonely, but he quickly takes back his words. Her heart flutters with the realization that his words have left an impact on her. Secretly, she's already planning to spend her summer in his apartment. Playfully, she starts teasing him, repeating his words as he denies them. Akutsu continues to pester him, urging him to admit that he wants her to visit during the summer. When he remains stubborn, she clings onto him, playfully putting her weight on his back. To end her antics, he finally says the words she wants to hear, causing her to blush, though she tries not to show it. As they sit on the bed, she anticipates a possible confession from him, and her heart races with excitement. However, nothing comes out of his mouth. To dispel any assumptions, and since he asked nicely, she agrees to visit him. But along with the promise comes a warning. He should be prepared to handle her every day. On the first day of summer, Uyama hopes to create memorable moments, but Akutsu's mood is gloomy, worse than before. She isn't able to fully enjoy her summer due to remedial classes for failing a test. To add to her frustration, a sudden call from school interrupts her peaceful sleep, and the rain ruins her plans to go to the pool. Uyama is also upset at the thought of not seeing her in casual clothes. Out of frustration, she unexpectedly takes off her clothes, revealing the bikini she prepared. Uyama is shocked and panicked, urging her to not strip in the room, but she did it unknowingly. Seeing him flustered excites her, and she playfully teases him to look at her body, showing it off while he can't even bring himself to look. Teasing him is her way of relieving stress. She forces him to look at her and compliment her, but in an awkward moment, he accidentally pulls her bikini string, revealing her large breasts. In reflex, she slaps him, making it an unforgettable and eventful summer indeed. It's the bloom of the holidays, and Akutsu is spending her days at Uyama's apartment. Today, she is already there quite early. She saw Cozy in his bed, dozing off. He approaches her and asks about her ongoing remedial work, but as expected, she is not attending it. Her mother has been forcing her to attend, but she is definitely not spending her summer at school, so she pretends to attend and comes over to his apartment instead. Is it not better to bear with it for a few weeks so she can spend her summer peacefully? But he cannot raise his concern because he's enjoying her presence too much. They are about to play a game. She thinks it's Masaki, but as she answers it, it is not the familiar voice of a friend, but a teacher's. Already in panic, she doesn't know what to do, but Oyama is there to save her. He picks up the phone with a different voice and he pretends to be her father and starts making excuses that his daughter is sick and is unable to attend the classes. And so, she's able to escape the teacher for the meantime. She thanks him, but of course she has to share that he sounds nothing like her father and starts teasing him about how he must have wanted her to stay with him. Surprisingly, he did not even deny all of her accusations. He admits that he wants her to stay in her room or else summer will be boring. This makes her feel flustered, but to hide it, she starts jokingly accusing him of being a pervert. They keep on bantering while pushing each other. They look like they're definitely having fun. Well, except that the next morning, the teacher learns about their antics. Well, it seems that not all days of summer are sunny. The rain is pouring outside when Akutsu suddenly wakes up from her slumber, startled by a nightmare. As she opens her eyes and returns to her senses, silence surrounds her instead of the expected voice of Uyama. Maybe he's at the store, but fear begins to creep in, the remnants of her haunting dream lingering. She doesn't mind being alone, but urging him to return quickly shouldn't be an issue, right? Her thoughts race, and her hands tremble as she attempts to call him. With hopeful anticipation, she expects him to answer, but instead a roaring tone fills the room. He's left his phone behind. The whistling sound of the wind and the thundering storm intensify her anxiety. Then, in a sudden turn of events, the door swings open, revealing a soaked Uya and Uyama. The two had met on their way home and got caught in the rain. The apartment's owner offers a towel to the lady. Uyama is about to fetch one when he notices Akutsu trembling, and without hesitation, she jumps at him, clinging onto him despite his wet clothes. The sweet sight from earlier is now gone and is replaced by an awkward atmosphere. The embarrassment of what Akutsu did dawns on her. She even got wet because of the tight hug. 
Her shame goes up the roof when she realizes that they stayed like that for 10 minutes. The awkward air consumes the two, and the only person who is happy despite everything is Uya, as she is seen grinning while staring at them. The storm continues to send heavy rains on land. It sure is dangerous to go home. Akutsu thinks that she should stay, but after what happened, she is overly conscious and embarrassed. She is already panicking and unable to think rationally on what to do. She is fidgeting around when he calls her and offers what she has been thinking about, to stay for the night. The atmosphere is again tinted with awkwardness, but she accepts his offer immediately with no hesitation. It makes her blush that he offers her to stay willingly. With that, she can't stop smiling, but of course she doesn't want to show it. Looking around, he notices that one of them is gone. It's Uya. She goes on under the rain to give the two some private space they need, thanking the typhoon for letting Akutsu stay overnight. As she plans to stay over, she notices the boy acting fidgety, which piques her curiosity. Is he hiding something? Suddenly, he inches closer, gazing intently at her, and she wonders if this could be the moment they've been longing for, the first intimate night together. However, to her surprise, he extends his arm and offers reassurance, telling her not to fear the raging typhoon because she's with him. He perceives that she might be scared of the storm, so he earnestly offers his comfort. Blushing at his genuine concern for her, she's deeply touched by his thoughtfulness and the unexpected gesture of a hug. Initially hesitant, dreading the possibility of another awkward moment, she tries to resist the urge to embrace him. But, as if enchanted by some unspoken connection, her body moves on its own, and she finds herself enveloping him in her arms, relishing the warmth of his presence. Akutsu is on a friend's trip with Masaki. They are in a pool. It is indeed quiet without her. He is just scrolling through his phone when a message from her pops up. It is a picture of her in a bikini, and she is asking for his opinion. His heart is beating rapidly at the sight of it. Instead of answering the message directly, he replies about how fun it must be. He is already flushed by the sudden message, overthinking that she will surely mock him. This time he replies with his thought, it looks cute. She even replied that they will see each other soon and that she will make him feel great. Then a video of her friend touching her chest pops up. Uyama is already feeling weak and flustered with all the messages when suddenly a series of popping notifications come. It is her again, but the tone of the message is different. She is already outside his room and she reminds that he should not save any of the pictures she sent. Confused, he walks up to the open door, only to find a flustered and blushing face of Akutsu. She immediately explains that it was not her, but Misaki, who sent him all those pictures. She is even defending herself from the video, saying that they only took it for fun. She is already ranting about everything that he chooses not to tell her that he saved all of those. As usual, she's in his apartment again, hanging out. Akutsu's favorite manga will be released in two days, according to Uyama, but unfortunately she is not available by that time. She informs him that she got invited to a barbecue night with some tanned boys from the university. The moment he hears this, his ears ring with jealousy. The thought of her mingling with boys is already making his blood boil. His jealousy is obvious and she even notices it. She is asking why, but of course she already has an idea of what the reason is. It must be the boys. She starts reassuring him that she really doesn't want to go. It is such a relief to him. Now she's asking for the reason why he doesn't want her to go. Well, it's obvious, but she wants to hear it. Knowing that he is jealous is making her heart happy. She wants to hear from her that he wants her to stay. She is testing him that she will attend if he does not say the reason why. Feeling a little defeated, he has no choice but to express himself. So, like a kid, he pleads with her not to go, but he is still not able to tell the reason. She is pressing him to tell her while admiring how cute he looks. As water splashes on Uyama's face, he realizes the situation he's in with Akutsu alone in the bathroom is not good. Let's rewind to why they're there. It all started when Akutsu forced Uyama to explain why he didn't want her to go to a barbecue party with her friends and some tanned guys. Unwilling to confess his true feelings, he made an excuse to get her to accompany him to the beach. The catch was she didn't know how to swim, but she still wanted a beach-like experience. Now, both of them are wearing swimsuits in the bathroom, pretending to be at the beach or pool. Akutsu hands Uyama a bottle, asking him to apply sunblock on her to enhance the illusion. However, it turns out to be a body wash, but she brushes it off as part of the experience. Reluctantly, Uyama applies the sunblock to Akutsu's back, admiring her slender figure. Unaware of his actions, Akutsu warns him not to do anything dirty, but for him, it's already a delicate situation. He didn't even realize his hands were moving inappropriately. When it's Akutsu's turn to apply the sunblock on Oyama, she jokingly asks if he's having fun, to which he plainly admits that he is. Teasingly, she suggests he might be thinking of something lewd. Out of nowhere, Oyama thanks her for the beach experience, leaving her flustered and unable to reply. After a few quiet moments, Akutsu tells Oyama to wrap up their beach experience. As they attempt to stand up, she suddenly slips on the floor, falling directly onto Oyama. Their faces instantly turn red as they realize the compromising position they're in. Clearly, Uyama's trip has become quite slippery. Akutsu is furious because of the mosquitoes bothering her. Despite Uyama telling her to calm down, she's been battling with them for a while. In desperation to get rid of them, she lays down on the floor and volunteers to be the bait, asking Uyama to kill the mosquitoes whenever they land on her. This leads to a thought crossing Uyama's mind. Does her order give him permission to look at her body? Suddenly, a mosquito lands on her face and she asks him to kill it. However, seeing her face, he can't bring himself to do it. 
He apologizes, worried that he might accidentally hurt her in the process. Akutu's heart races, touched by his gentleness and concern for her. However, all of those tender feelings vanish the moment he unexpectedly grabs her bosom when a mosquito lands on it, causing her to shout in surprise. His gentle manliness seems to have disappeared as he acts more like an animal in that moment. While holding Akutu, Aoi knocks into Yama's bedroom, and the moment he opens the door, she asks him if he can let Akutu sleep in his room. It turns out that Aoi saw Akutu outside, and Akutu told her that she was hanging out with friends the entire night. Aoi brought her home since she looks too sleepy to go home. However, Uyama's also about to sleep as he spent his entire night playing video games, but Aoi jokes around saying they should just sleep together. Too sleepy to decline, Akutsu and Uyama actually went to the bedroom and slept together. It was a shocker for Aoi, she enters the bedroom and admires how cute they look together under the blanket. She feels so happy seeing them when suddenly Akutsu holds Uyama's hands. It's her habit to grab and hold things nearby while sleeping. It surprises Aoi. She's secretly shrieking out of happiness as she witnesses Akutsu doing her habits while they were sleeping. Suddenly, Uyama hugged Akutsu, dreaming that he's hugging his cat. She's shocked by what's currently happening. One blink of an eye and they're both already inside the blanket. She couldn't really see what's happening inside, but she presumes that things are starting to get steamy. But instead of going out of the room, Aoi stayed inside thinking that she might as well enjoy the show no matter how many hours it lasts. The next morning, Suzuki and Tanaka decide to go to Uyama's house to pick up Akutsu. But when they arrive, Akutsu is still sleeping. Tanaka is disappointed, as Akutu isn't going to show up in remedials and they're going to be in trouble too. But the disappointment in their faces quickly vanishes as naughty expressions replace it. They suddenly ask Uyama if they're doing the deed since Akutu's been going in his house pretty much when the holiday started. His cheeks flushed out of embarrassment and he quickly denies it, telling him that they're just friends. But they don't believe it. Tanaka even tells him that she doesn't understand why Akutu is dating him. It's probably because he's good in bed to the point that she is always craving his touch and can't live without him anymore. It's humiliating enough to Uyama to hear those things from them. He tries to defend himself by saying that they're not dating and only went out once when they went to the beach. But as soon as they hear the word beach, they suddenly ask him if he saw how big Akutsu's bosoms are and if he touched them. However, despite their constant teasing towards Uyama, he seems to be not very interested. But it's actually the opposite. He's very much interested in her. She's cute and he's happy whenever he spends time with her. And plus, he's a guy too. He likes boobs and thighs, but that doesn't mean he'll lay his hands on Akutsu whenever the mood is right. Hearing that from him made them think that he's totally in love with Akutsu, but still can't understand why they're not going out. Uyama begs them not to tell Akutsu what they heard when all of a sudden Akutsu walked towards him half asleep and suddenly squished herself to him, asking why he didn't wake her up. Uyama's face is reddened by what Akutsu's doing. When Akutsu realizes that Tanaka and Suzuki were there, she plays it cool and asks them if they're there to pick her up. She hurriedly goes to the room to change. She hurriedly sits on the floor, quivering because of what she did as she hears her friends insisting that they really did the deed. However, it seemed like their friends won't believe Uyama no matter how many times he denies it. Aoi even tried to tell them that Uyama and Akutsu are not dating, but they shrugged it off. After that, Akutsu shuts herself in the room and won't come out. While in Uyama's room, he suddenly tells Akutsu that his mom will be visiting the next day. Akutsu thinks that it means she can't go there that day, but she's wrong since his mom wants to meet her. It turns out that whenever Uyama and his mom are on a call, she can hear Akutsu and thinks that she's Uyama's girlfriend. It's shocking for Akutsu that he doesn't even deny her as his girlfriend, but Uyama thinks that it's better than telling his mom that he lets a random girl sleep and hang out in his room. That's why Uyama requests her to act as his girlfriend, and he leaves her with no choice but to just play along. However, Akutsu still has some worries if Uyama's mother will like her or not. She worries if his mother might think that she's way different from the others, or might think that Uyama being with her doesn't seem right. She's about to back out when he tells her that she already scared his mother once when she banged on the door. But he tells her that he'll clear it up and just continue to act like her girlfriend, to which she agrees. They both decide to practice how to call each other and how to act like lovers. Akutsu is silly around Uyama and even whispers his first name in his ears when the door suddenly opens and Uyama's mom goes in. They are in shock. Uyama's mom is embarrassed and hurriedly apologizes for interrupting them. After what happened, Uyama's mom continues to apologize and asks Uyama how he's doing. After answering his mom's question, Uyama proceeds to introduce Akutsu as his girlfriend. However, his mom is scared because of the way Akutsu stares at her. Akutsu apologizes, saying that it's all because she's nervous. Akutsu begins to politely introduce herself as Kua's mom, which somehow surprises Uyama as he has never seen her be that polite to someone. Suddenly, Uyama's mom asks them what's wrong between the two of them since it looks like they're not that close. She's actually doubting the two of them since Akutsu is just so pretty and has a massive sense of style and looks popular among guys. And when she heard Akutsu yelling over the phone, she was scared that's why she thought that instead of being Uyama's girlfriend, she was actually just some delinquent who was using Uyama's house as a hangout place. Uyama's mom is prepared to fight her if that's the case. All of a sudden, Uyama's mom asks Akutsu what she likes about Uyama. Surprised by the sudden question, Akutsu tells her that she likes her son because of his kindness, the way that he spoils her, and the way he worries for her. Uyama's kinda shocked watching her act. He doesn't know that's how good she is. Uyama's mom turns to Uyama and asks him what he likes about Akutsu. Akutsu whispers telling him to just say something or else she'll beat her if she'll realize that they're just acting. 
Uyama tells Akuzu that he'll try, but he doesn't think that his words will be enough to convince his mother. Suddenly, they face Uyama's mother while he hugs her from behind, telling his mother that their love for each other is so strong that it can't be described by mere words. She is so surprised, and as a mother seeing her son very happy, she wishes that that moment will last them forever. After dinner, Uyama's mom shows her an album which contains some childhood photos of Uyama. In the middle of watching those photos, Uyama excuses himself, saying that he'll buy something. Watching those photos makes Uyama's mom reminisce about the past. They used to be so close before. In the middle of watching Uyama's childhood pictures, Akutu asks Uyama's mom why he's living alone. It turns out that she has to move for a lot of work reasons, and he doesn't want to transfer and make new friends all the time. So he chose to live on his own and stay in the school that he's in right now. But she makes sure to contact him all the time, since she's also so worried about her son that he might feel lonely. But over time, he starts mentioning some Akutsu-san who's been coming over to play video games and watch movies with him. Now that Uyama's mom saw how happy Uyama is around Akutsu, she can really tell that he likes her. And with that, she seriously looks Akutsu in the eyes and asks her to take care of him. Akutu told her that she likes him too, so she'll take care of him. All of a sudden, the door opens and she sees Uyama. Obviously, he hears what she just said and makes him frantic inside. But then he reminds himself that she's just acting and it doesn't mean anything. Aoi and Akutsu are together in the kitchen. It turns out that Akutsu is asking her for help on how to cook curry since his mom is messaging her that her son loves to eat curry. Akutsu? Mom? Uyama? Aoi quivers as she wonders how she could miss that kind of development. Aoi proceeds to ask Akutsu if she tried making a curry. She suddenly shows a photo of Aoi when she makes her question what the photo is. Well, it turns out that it's Akutsu's curry. Based on the way it looks, it doesn't even look like a curry because of its unpresentable look. Akutsu thinks that if she just figures out how to season it normally, she will be fine. As Aoi looks at her and sees the bandages around her fingers, she really can tell that Akutsu is trying her best. Aoi thinks that she is the cutest thing ever. That's why she'll also try her best to help her and they start by correcting the way Akutsu holds the knife. In the middle of helping Akutsu, Aoi asks her why she's still trying if Uyama already likes her curry the other day. Although her cooking doesn't taste that bad, and since Uyama likes curry that much, she still wants to at least make it presentable. Akutsu's answer touches Aoi's soul. She thinks that Akutsu is right. When you love someone, that's just the bare minimum. Surprisingly, Akutsu agrees. However, Akutsu denies what that says and frantically tells her that it's for Uyama's mom. Meanwhile, Uyama is wondering why they're making a ruckus in his kitchen. After cooking, Akutsu is taking a photo of the curry while Uyama is apologizing to her since his mom is being too pushy. But Akutsu shrugs it off, telling him that they're supposed to do it since she also doesn't want to experience her death wrath. While watching them, Aoi tells them both that they should take a photo acting more lovey-dovey. She even cites an example that they should take a photo of Akutsu feeding Uyama. Aoi receives a huge disagreement from them, but after a moment, Akutsu realizes that there's nothing wrong with it since they're just acting. They proceed on doing that plan, but it doesn't go on how they planned it to be since Aoi is too pushy on what they should do while they don't have the patience for it. The worst thing is, Aoi accidentally sends it to Uyama's mom. Uyama's mom replies with just a question mark. Desperate to fix their image to his mom, Uyama pulls her close to him and puts his hands on her shoulder as he takes a selfie. He then sends it to his mom, hoping that it will fix the damage. While hanging out at Uyama's room, Akutu suddenly tells her to get some ice cream if he'll just go to the store. Uyama tells her what flavor, but she can't seem to decide, so he just tells her to go along with him. But it seems like a bad move, so he just tells her to call him if she already decides. But before he can even go, Akutu tells him that she'll go with him. Akutu questions the shock reaction coming from Uyama, and then teases him that he's too nervous and is thinking that them going out at night makes it look like they're dating. Before they go to the store, Akutu asks her if she's not going to change before they go, since her clothes are kind of revealing. Akutu jokes around that he's being a pervert, but then Uyama snaps at her, telling her that only a handful of guys will not look at her, and that he doesn't want a bunch of random guys to ogle at her if she's a girl out wearing those clothes. Akutu is shocked by how concerned Uyama is. In the end, she listens to him, and they both head to the store wearing his clothes. When they arrive at the store, Akutu still can't choose what to buy, which is why she asks Uyama. Looking at Uyama as he decides makes her think that them being outside kind of looks like they're dating. She realizes that she's blushing, and so she hurriedly erases those thoughts from her head. Throughout the entire shopping in the store, the idea of them looking like a couple can't seem to get off of her mind. It even gets worse when she sees a couple shopping together, which annoys her. She's about to reach something from an aisle when Uyama arrives asking her what else she wants. She's startled. Those thoughts once again surface in her mind. As a way to erase it, she excuses herself, telling him that she'll just wait outside. Now he thinks she's acting weird. When Uyama finishes, he proceeds to go to Akutsu, who's waiting outside. He then tells her that he bought the thing that she's looking at a while ago. It's cards. Her face flushes. She can't believe that he really bought it for her. Uyama even tells her that they can play it together. However, instead of being thankful, Akutsu reacts in a strange manner. She tells him to play it on his own and proceeds to get her ice cream. And throughout the rest of the day, Akutsu is in a strange mood. While walking on their way home, Uyama can't seem to understand the reason why Akutsu is in such a bad mood. He asks her if it's because the summer break is over, which makes her really furious. Now that she remembers it, she can't stop yelling and ranting about how much she doesn't have a proper break. 
She even asks Uyama to carry her since it sucks so much that she doesn't even want to walk. Uyama, being afraid that she'll throw a tantrum on the streets, has no choice but to carry her. While carrying Akutsu, Uyama still hears her ranting about her summer break. That's why he told her to just get over it already. In Uyama's case, he starts to talk about how he enjoys spending his break with her. They got to play games, and she made him curry. It was truly fun. All of a sudden, Akutsu blurts out that she wishes it can continue forever, which surprises Uyama. After realizing what she says, she makes an excuse saying that she hopes that summer break lasts forever. She then pretends to doze off to sleep to avoid creating more embarrassing situations. However, Uyama hopes to continue being with her too. She hears it and is about to react because she isn't sure if he meant the summer break or the way things are. First day of school after summer break, Uyama is constantly reminding Akutu to hurry or they'll be late. Akutu, being her usual self, persuades him to skip school with her and just play video games since she's still going to sleep there anyway. Uyama disagrees. Sleeping in school is still better than not going to school at all. Akutu is persistent on not going to school. She even asks Uyama to just leave the key and for him to just go alone. But Uyama doesn't allow it since he remembers the time she was alone in his house. It was a complete mess. In the middle of their bickering, Aoi comes and teases them about going to walk together after summer break just like couples. Now that she says it, she suddenly plans on walking alone to school and tells Uyama to take some distance from her or she'll die out of shame if people see her walking to school with him. When Akutu's about to walk to school, someone passes by and accidentally bumps her shoulder. It hurts her and she tells the girl to watch where she's walking, but the girl only replies to her that it's her fault for having a little chit chat in the middle of the road. The atmosphere becomes heavier and Aoi asks Uyama to stop them and he does. But as soon as the girl hears him calling Akutsu's name, she asks her if it's truly the Riko Nissan she knows. She exclaims and greets Akutsu happily. It turns out that they know each other. Hibiki is seen clinging to Akutsu, who then introduces her as someone who is a year below them. Akutsu tells her short story of how they first met. Hibiki was looking for a fight and she beat her. After that, they became friends. Hibiki is happy to find her in this certain neighborhood out of all places. A confused Uyama just remains still in the background while Akutsu struggles to remove herself from Hibiki's grasp. Excited that Hibiki has finally met Akutsu once again, she recalls in greater detail how they really met. She even wears the jacket that Akutsu gave her, which she then sniffs aggressively, moaning out Akutsu's name. This act by Hibiki makes Akutsu cringe and Uyama weirded out. Uyama then reminds Akutsu that they have to go. This triggers Hibiki to question who the guy is and what is he to her beloved Riko Nisan. Akutsu and Uyama both whisper to each other, thinking of how to explain their unusual situation to her. Their action causes Hibiki to get jealous and pick a fight with Uyama. She declares that she loves Akutsu more than anyone else. She then challenges him to prove his love for her beloved. Uyama, with no answer to that, asks Akutsu what he should do in this situation. Uya, who has been with them since the start of the chapter, and even Akutsu herself are both fidgeting, curious about what he'd say. Taking too long to respond, Hibiki drags Akutsu away and suggests that she ditch Uyama because he's just a pervert aiming for Akutsu's body. Hearing this makes Uyama clench his fist and finally answer. Hibiki finds out from him that her beloved Nissan always comes over every day to Uyama's room and that he would not mind if forever, following her for the rest of his life. Hearing all that makes Akutsu's heart thump and her face turn red. She then teases Uyama, who only exclaims such words because he had to think fast. He just didn't want her to get taken away. Hibiki breaks into tears, running away in defeat while cursing Uyama as well. The remaining three, Akutsu, Uya, and Uyama, just look at her as she goes. The next day, Hibiki interrupts Uyama as he is just coming out from his apartment and challenges him to a battle. Whoever loves Akutsu more gets to be with her. A stressed Uyama just wonders how he'll deal with her. Uyama wonders how Hibiki got his apartment right. She proudly says that she has been watching Akutsu for a few days to see where she goes. This scares him. Hibiki peeks inside, scanning the room where Akutsu is staying whenever she's in her room. She then provokes Uyama by letting him know that Akutsu used to stay at her room. He realizes that this is her idea of a battle. She proudly adds that they used to do many fun things together, showing a picture of sleeping Akutsu and 1999 more pictures. She then shows another picture of Akutsu with short hair, provoking him once again and exclaiming that she wins. The battle makes Uyama uneasy, still worried that she might take Akutsu away from him. He announces that she isn't the only one who has pictures of Akutsu. He proudly shows her a picture of Akutsu wearing a bikini. A flustered Hibiki shows another picture of Akutsu wearing a maid cosplay. Uyama shows her yet another bikini picture, but the battle doesn't end as they just continue to bicker. The sight of them having fun irks Akutsu, who is with Uya. Both are just a distance away. Today's match from the battle ends at a tie. An annoyed Akutsu is back inside the room, laying down on her stomach. Uyama comes inside and complains to her about Hibiki. This makes her realize that she may have misunderstood what she saw earlier. He continues to complain further, to the point that Akutsu wonders if he's upset. Akutsu finally talks about her experience living with Hibiki. Last year, she lived with her. It was normal at first until Hibiki started being weird and asking her to take a bath together, to sleep together, and so on. According to her, Hibiki is a very persistent girl, proven by the experiences she had last year. As she finishes talking, she sees him get more upset. 
so she asks him what he wants her to do with Hibiki, which just makes him even more troubled. Akutsu, however, finds this cute. Akutsu tests him, suggesting that she should pay Hibiki a visit. It becomes visible and obvious to Akutsu that Ayama is indeed upset about the fact that it's not her first time living in another room. Despite that, he tries to hide the fact that he's upset by saying he had other plans anyway so she can go. Akutsu doubts this. Uyama panics when she declares that she'll go now, but he just shyly asks her when she'll come here again. This takes Akutsu's heart in turbo. She finds him cute, to the point that she decides to not leave anymore. She tells him her final verdict with her back towards him, hiding her blushing face. Uyama makes it clear that he's happy with the decision. The day after the last incident, Akutsu slams Uyama's room door open, giving him a scare. She apologizes right before Hibiki pops out from behind her, declaring another challenge against him. Akutsu sits on the side of the bed across from Uyama, who's on the floor. The last time, Hibiki did not get a full view of the room. She comments on how shabby it is before attempting to plop herself down on the bed besides Akutsu. On reflex, Akutsu stops her bottom from touching the bed as she has both her hands on Hibiki's hips, surprising everyone. Amused, Hibiki provokes Uyama and makes it a fact that Akutsu always lets her sit on her lap. Akutsu notices him pouting, signaling jealousy so she provokes him even further by confirming Hibiki's claim. She wants to see Uyama get more jealous, so she places her arms around Hibiki's waist. A happy Hibiki rejoices that she is the winner and her beloved Akutsu chooses her. Akutsu takes a peek at Uyama's sulky expression, to the point that her heart couldn't take it any longer. She gets up and hugs Uyama. Realizing right away what she's doing, her face turns red, and she pushes him back, telling everyone that she just didn't want anyone to feel left out. She looks away, still surprised of herself that her body just moved on its own when she saw Uyama pouting. Hibiki accuses Akutsu of lying because, according to her, the face she made when she hugged him is the same face a person makes when they love something so much that they can't live without it. This makes Akutsu blush even more. A blushing Uyama looks at Akutsu, hoping for a hint of any confirmation. Will Akutsu finally realize and admit how much she likes Uyama? Uyama takes a few shy glances at Akutsu, who is just as red as he is. He is hoping that whatever Hibiki said was true. He did see it in Akutsu's face after all. Hibiki gets jealous at the thought, so she announces that she was just mistaken and that it may have been the kind of love Akutsu would feel for a pet. Akutsu, desperate to get out of the embarrassing situation, immediately agrees with her, causing Yama to sit back down on the floor and get glum. Hibiki notices Akutsu playing with his hair and patting him some more for far too longer than she should be. She gets Akutsu's attention, which reminds Akutsu that Hibiki was still there. She couldn't help but keep on petting Uyama since he looks so sad and pettable. A fidgeting Hibiki begs for Akutsu to pet her in the head as well. Akutsu has no choice but to do it, or else Hibiki might say something weird again. Uyama tackles Akutsu before her hand could even reach Hibiki's head. He doesn't want Akutsu to pet anyone else besides him. This infuriates Hibiki, stating that he's just a pet. Uyama shouts and justifies himself by saying what's wrong about a pet seeking affection from its master. Clearly, his jealousy is already at full blast. This makes Akutsu highly amused, pulling him down on the bed and continuing to pet him some more. Akutsu sees Hibiki trembling, worried that she might say something weird again. She hastily explains to Hibiki that he just reminded her of a dog. Hibiki didn't believe her at first, but somehow was convinced by Akutsu in the end. Uya, who is just outside their room, remarks that something interesting is taking place since it was noisy inside. On a different day at Akutsu's home, she is shaken awake by a hand. She calls out to Ayama while also commenting on how persistent he is to wake her up. She gets up and sees that it was her mother, who looks almost exactly like Akutsu, just with darker hair. She asks who this Uyama is. Akutsu's mother is holding up her cigarette while she asks more questions about Uyama, also telling her to invite him over sometime. This upsets Akutsu and tells her that she never will. At school, Uyama is standing in the hallway when he notices Tanaka, Suzuki, and a teacher talking about the whereabouts of Akutsu. Both Tanaka and Suzuki turn to Uyama. They both agree that Akutsu is most likely at his place. This puts him in a panic. The teacher thinks nothing of this. He just asks him to tell Akutsu to come to school. Uyama is worried that the fact that Akutsu is staying at his place might become a weird rumor, so he asks the two girls not to mention it in the open. Suzuki then starts a video call with her, and Akutsu picks up as she's slurping a box of juice. Suzuki lets her know that the teacher's telling her to go to school. Akutsu is firm and staying at home. She doesn't want to go to school no matter what. Even when they lure her by saying Uyama is feeling lonely, she just says that it's not her problem. Tanaka and Suzuki have a plan. Suzuki changes the camera's view to both Tanaka and Uyama. Tanaka pulls Uyama to her, teasing him of how lonely he must be. He blushes in response. This sight enrages Akutsu, but she doesn't want to completely show it. She wants to tell Uyama to get away, but she's only doing so in her head. They provoke Akutsu even more by having Tanaka push her body against Uyama's and propose that they do something lewd. Suzuki and Tanaka are having fun, knowing that the provocation is bound to have Akutsu running to school. Uyama slips his tongue when he says that he can only do these things with Akutsu. Altogether, the mood changes. Everyone is speechless. Akutsu is last seen blushing by them before she ends the call. 
Realizing what he just said, he blushes even more. Tanaka continues to have fun by teasing him that he's really into Akutsu. Because of their provocation, Suzuki doubts that Akutsu will want to come to school even more. Meanwhile, in Uyama's house, Akutsu spends five hours agonizing over the video call. Apparently, the call was only cut short because she was surprised to hear what Uyama said. She fidgets around, wondering if what he told them was true. Akutu gets up from bed and tries to tell herself that this is what she is expecting of Uyama anyway. She then looks around for something to tease him with when he gets home. A drawer has her attention as she remembers that she placed her frisky panties in there. She is delighted to find the string-like underwear. She plans to put them on, but then it registers to her that it might look like she's inviting him. She gulps the idea down and reassures herself once again that she's definitely not hoping for anything like that. With Akutsu's shorts and underwear down, she slides into her skimpy one, grumbling that it might be too lewd after all. Just as she's tugging the sides of the underwear, Uyama slides the door open. He's finally home. Both Akutsu and Uyama stare at each other for a long while before they break into a more composed version of themselves. Uyama turns away, apologizing, while Akutsu pulls back her shorts. Just as he opens the topic about the video call from earlier, she interrupts him right away and scurries inside the bathroom. In the bathroom, she hurriedly takes off her shorts and throws the skimpy underwear off in total embarrassment. She screams inside her head, beating herself up that Uyama was not supposed to see her like that. Meanwhile, the boy in question is just outside the bathroom. Seeing Akutu's underwear looking like that excites him. In Uyama's room, Akutu is lying on the bed, watching a cat video Uya sent her. She squeals at the sight of a cute black cat, telling Uyama to get a cat. He is quick to decline as he doesn't have a job to keep a pet. The landlady won't allow pets anyway. Uyama tells Akutu his plan that he'd want a cat as well after he graduates and gets a job. This triggers Akutu to suggest looking for an apartment that allows pets after they graduate. He asks her if she is implying that she will be moving in with him after they graduate. The both of them freeze for a while before Akutu breaks into laughter. She finds it silly that he got that idea from what she said. Uyama sits down in embarrassment while she continues to laugh. It turns out it was a slip of the tongue moment for Akutu. She beats herself up in her head. She's thankful that she was able to fool him this time. She turns away and blushes at the fact that she may really be into him after all. Uyama takes notice of her sudden change and asks if they can just forget about the conversation. Akutu composes herself and continues to suggest that he should definitely move somewhere where he can keep a cat, jokingly adding that she'll chase him out after so she can have the cat to herself. Outside their apartment room, Uya is eavesdropping. She's in total panic after finding out that she may not be able to get the real lovey-dovey cohabitation arc of their love story if she won't allow pets in the room. At school, Akutu's class finishes their first gym class. Akutu, together with Tanaki and Suzuki, changes their PE uniform back to their regular ones. Suzuki points out that Akutu has been wearing Uyama's PE shirt as it has his name on it. A surprised Akutu is just now noticing this. They go back to their classroom where they see Uyama being circled around by his guy classmates who are complaining about him wearing Akutu's uniform. Seeing Uyama get insults from their classmates about how they don't fit together, Akutu slams the classroom door open, scaring everyone. They are all under the assumption that Akutu is going to kill Uyama. Akutu goes to Uyama's desk, giving him a seemingly cold look before pinching his nose and lecturing him for mistakenly exchanging their uniforms. She also makes it clear to everyone that they're living together. Flustered by what she'd just done, she goes back to her seat beside Uyama and hides her face in embarrassment. The class whispers about how cute Akutsu is, as she looks pretty kind around a quiet guy like Uyama. And so, they got the entire class's approval. Now at Uyama's place, both Akutsu and him talk about the rumors in class that they are going out. Uyama looks away while he asks why Akutsu acted in a different way that time. She blushes at the question, apparently she acted on impulse because she was growing upset their classmates were saying that they weren't a match at all. She tries to make up another lie, hoping Uyama takes the bait once again. Akutsu mumbles on how it's a pain that they have to hide their current situation. She's tired of denying it, but Uyama, who is just worried that he might ruin her reputation, ascertains that they have to. This breaks Akutsu's composure. She stands up and screams that it's not a problem for her at all. She reassures Uyama that he's not a burden and that her point is that she's okay with the rumors saying they're going out. Grabbing Uyama by his collar, she explicitly tells him that if it was someone else, it would be a problem, but since it's him, she stops right there. She is now aware of what she's saying. It just occurs to her that her face is quite close to his, so she blushes even more. In the end, she pushes him away and makes it clear that they should just ignore the rumors. Uyama has no choice but to follow. Akutu skips school again today. At Uyama's room, he sees Akutu just waking up from a long nap. He tries to argue with her that she has to go to school. She teases him by placing her arm around him, asking him why he wants her in school, and he complains that everyone always asks him where she is. Akutu doesn't listen at all, and teases Uyama even more by pulling him close to her body, taunting him that she hasn't showered the whole day. He successfully resists, thinking about lewd thoughts associated with her smell. Akutu then goes to shower. His doorbell rings, and he opens it to see Tanaka and Suzuki outside. 
After a few questions about Akutsu's whereabouts, they immediately dash away in apology. Before getting back inside, a figure goes near Oyama. He wonders who it is. The scene then takes place back inside the room where Akutsu is fresh from the shower. Without a moment to waste, she teases him again, taunting him that he may have preferred her sweaty. Uyama tries to get her attention to her surroundings. She looks over at the side and sees her mother in a cashier's uniform, sitting like a gangster. Akutsu is suddenly pale. She dashes away, but to no avail since her mother has already grabbed her shorts. She just screams in embarrassment, asking her mother why she's here. She's totally doomed. Before going straight to her point, Mama Akutsu, who looks cold and composed, assumes that both Uyama and Akutsu are dating, to which Akutsu denies. Mama Akutsu wants her to go back home, but Akutsu refuses because she doesn't want to be around her parents. Uyama thinks that they may have a family issue, but this idea completely dissolves when Akutsu complains that she just doesn't want to suffer at home while her parents flirt with each other 24-7. Mama Akutsu reacts in a rather cute way, totally different from her cool side, denying that they do not flirt at all. This revelation surprises Uyama. Mama Akutsu accuses Akutsu of flirting with Uyama 24-7, to which Akutsu reacts in the same cute way as her mother did, also denying it. Both Akutsus bicker some more. Uyama gets behind Akutsu and grabs her, making her stop. Mama Akutsu stares at them for a while, then turns away to leave. She tells Uyama to have her go to school before she finally gets out the door. Outside, she realizes that Akutsu is just the same as her back when she was her age. She is sure that her child is already head over heels for Uyama, just as she was with Akutsu's father back then. Back inside their room, Uyama notes that the two Akutsu-sons are really similar, in many aspects. Akutsu tells Uyama to chase her out the next time she comes back. He refuses, as Mama Akutsu is a scary woman. She insists further that she wants him to protect her, which causes Uyama's heartbeat to skyrocket. Akutsu suggests that he tell her mother that he won't hand her over. This suggestion puts them in an awkward silence. She didn't realize what she said until she had said it. The thought of Uyama leaving her starts to upset her. She notices her frown, so he cheers her up by suggesting that he'll tell her mother that he prefers to have her stay with him. This makes Akutsu genuinely happy. Apparently, the door was left open. Tanaka and Suzuki are eavesdropping as they came back to apologize for blowing Akutsu's cover. Uya is with them as Tanaka questions who she is. Uya can't believe she missed the mother arrival episode. She concludes that she has to come by more often. Hibiki declares her challenge to Uyama a day before Akutsu's birthday. He is astonished the first time he hears it since he doesn't know her birthday is coming up. Uyama feels clueless about what to get for her. It would be weird for him to not give any gift when she did buy him a cake for his birthday. He considers asking her for an idea, but he knows that she will just tease him. He goes on the internet to search for a recommendation about what present he should get for a girl. Akutsu, who's just beside him, starts teasing him about what he's doing on his phone. He continues browsing through the web, finding a perfect gift. Akutsu bothers him by making fun of him, trying to see what he's doing on the phone. Uyama's face is flushed all over as she finally gets a hold of the phone and takes a look at it. Impress a girl you like with these birthday gift options. It is a sight that catches her off guard and she begins to blush. They are both embarrassed as Uyama tries to tell her it's just a random page. Akutsu is flustered and ignores him out of embarrassment. She didn't get enough sleep that night. Uyama greets her with a happy birthday. Both are restless, which might be coming from the awkward atmosphere. Then he brings up his present for her. She teases him first, telling him that it might be from the page that he was looking at yesterday. He explains again that he just opened it by accident. A sudden change of mood envelops her as it goes dangerously low. Uyama hands her a bag. When she opens it, it's a hoodie. He explains that as October is fast approaching, it is going to get pretty cold. Akutsu can wear it whenever she's in the house during the cold months. Her face reddens as she thinks of him already considering that she will keep coming over to his house. Uyama adds that he tries to match the gift according to her style. Akutsu tries it on while he's blushing to see her wearing the gift he chose. Feeling delighted by the situation, he greets her again, with a heartfelt happy birthday, still feeling embarrassed. She hides her blushing face through the hood and expresses her gratitude, telling him that she will be there every day wearing the hoodie. Hibiki and Uya hear the conversation between the two, realizing that Akutsu seems happy with Uyama's gift. Feeling defeated, she realizes that the two really like each other and that she doesn't stand a chance against him. Hibiki finally accepts Uyama. Akutsu appears in front of Uyama's front door unannounced with her drunk mom. She explains that she got a call from her mom asking her to pick her up from the bar. Her mom refuses to go home, so Akutsu brings her to Uyama's apartment. Mama Akutsu explains that it was her husband's fault, saying that the kiss he gave her was two seconds shorter than usual. Akutsu doesn't hide her distaste once her mom starts talking about intimate topics like it was nothing. Her mom immediately defends, as they go their way trying to argue. Uyama tries to calm things down and suggests that Akutsu should call her dad. Suddenly, Mama Akutsu asks him if he understands her sentiment. She thinks that he kisses Akutsu too since that's what lovers do. His face heats up, thinking that Mama Akutsu is too different when she's drunk. Akutsu protests, telling her that they're not dating. 
She agrees to it half-heartedly, saying that her daughter just hangs out there. Mama Akutsu casually explains that it was the same for her and her husband. She also used to hang out at his place all the time, and that way she fell for him early. She then got a hold of him because she couldn't contain her love, and so they started going out. She teases them, saying that Akutsu might confess very soon. She denies her guesses as she gives her mom the phone, telling her that her dad is calling. It turns out that the cause of her sentiments is because of work. The two of them are shocked as her mom continues talking about being intimate with her husband. It is gross for Akutsu to witness her parents flirting on a phone call. Mama Akutsu finally comes to her senses and decides to leave. She reminds her daughter not to come home that day. As if she will, right? Akutsu apologizes to Oyama about her mom. He casually tells her that he's glad to witness how she's going to react when drunk, so he can be prepared when that happens in the future. She strongly denies it, being pissed by his remarks. Suddenly realizing that what he just said feels like he already assumed they'll be together in the future. Uyama meant it as a joke, but deep down he knows what it actually is. It's almost like a confession. The fall has already started, and Akutsu appears before Uyama wearing a jacket. He feels nostalgic as it reminds him of the first time she came to his apartment. It was half a year ago. Akutsu asks her what he thinks about that memory, and it reminds him how he used to be scared by her presence. She begins sharing her thoughts when she meets him. It's about how gloomy this guy sitting next to her was and how she thought that he was living on his own, so she planned to take over his house. Akutsu reassures him that it's all in the past and that she likes him now, so his house is in no danger. She likes him. Uyama is shocked to hear it, as Akutsu tries to process what she just said. She blatantly explains that it was more platonic than romantic. They are both blushing at the sudden pace, and he is left jaw-dropped, and speechless. She begins to complain about how she should not dwell on the past because of some jacket. She takes it off and changes her clothes. Uyama immediately turns his back. Akutsu continues to voice her complaints while Uyama is mesmerized by her outfit. It is the hoodie that he gave her on her birthday. She hides herself in her clothes, saying she hates him out of embarrassment. He looks down, taking it to heart, even though she explains that she didn't mean it. He is taken on an emotional roller coaster that day. Uya, after cleaning, returns to her usual entertainment to enjoy herself. She ponders what kind of rom-com she will get to experience that day. She realizes that there will be times when nothing special will happen. She thinks of tripping the main circuit breaker, which may lead to the classic lights went out scene, or lie and say that the building is going to be demolished. She disregards those terrible ideas because she doesn't want to cause any inconvenience to other residents. Even if she doesn't do anything, they'll still act lovey-dovey at each other when the time permits. To satisfy her curiosity, she leans on Uyama's front door. She feels ecstatic and happy about what she hears. It is another happy day for Uya. Hmm, what's happening inside? Akutsu asks Uyama to come to the bathroom, but he has something else in mind. She requests him to help her dye her hair since she can't do it on her own. Noticing his flushed look, she teases him cheekily, assuming he thinks of something else. He quickly denies it and accepts her request. The first thing that he thinks of when seeing her hair is that she looks sexy. He blanks out for a second, but quickly gets back to reality when she calls him out. He is clueless about how he should apply it, so he just runs it through her hair. He gently caresses her hair while freaking out in his mind. Akutu notices that Uyama feels weird while applying the dye, so she begins to make fun of it. With a gentle touch from his hands, she feels a jolt run through his body that makes her squeal. He asks her to stop acting like that as it distracts him, which she agrees with while her face paints red. She praises Uyama for doing such a great job and not messing her hair up. He thinks that it comes out perfectly as he softly strokes her hair. He immediately realizes what he did and apologizes for it, but Akutsu holds his hand and lets him check if there's still dark spots. But it's just an excuse because she likes it when he strokes her hair. She thinks that she'll have him dye it the next time too. The thought of it makes her heart skip a beat as it goes on for a while. Uyama got the intercom system installed in his apartment. It has a built-in camera that lets him see what's going on outside. He saw Akutsu with these before she came inside his room. She pokes at him, telling him that he might be staring at it all day. He defends that it was just pure coincidence. Then he's caught off guard when there's a sound coming from outside. He asks her if she sees a black shadow on the camera. She thinks that it might be a delivery guy, but he knows that it will ring the bell and be on the screen. Suddenly, a sound of breathing can be heard on the intercom. Akutsu believes it's a person because it blocks the camera with their body. Uyama thinks that someone is in front of his door now. She also remembers her mom mentioning that she saw a suspicious person near his apartment. The breathing gets louder, which scares them both. Uyama also thinks it might be a stalker or some pervert who's following her around. The thought of it pisses her off. She wants to confront the person behind the door, but he stops her, saying that he doesn't want her to go and put herself in danger. Uyama shows concern at his remarks, which makes her heart flutter, and so she agrees to calm down. The person behind the door starts bumping recklessly. He grabs her hands as he bravely swears to her that he will do his best to keep her safe, and he won't let him lay a finger on her. Akutsu blushes as she agrees. A thud sound creeps in, followed by silence. The person behind the door is already gone. On the other side of the door lies Uya, who's been listening to their conversation. The next day, Uya learns about the cameras and breaks into a cold sweat. 
Masaki is annoyed seeing the two flirting again. Akutu denies her claim. She gets angry that he didn't wake her up and so they were late, but he's just teaching him a lesson. Masaki doesn't buy her reason and even favors Uyama. Akutu asks why she's pissed all of a sudden. Yuko admits that it's because Akutsu doesn't hang out with them as much anymore, implying that she's missing her. Masaki disapproves of her claims, even if it's true. They end up teasing her at the end, and Akutsu tells Oyama that they'll be hanging out with Masaki, to which he agrees. In the end, Masaki is still in denial. The bell has been ringing for some time, so Oyama decides to open the door. Mama Akutsu's voice can be heard on the intercom. Akutsu's mom apologizes for the sudden visit and brings some sushi for them. She sits down and chugs an alcoholic drink. She initially plans to just give the sushi and leave, but she suddenly feels nostalgic and tells about her daughter. Mama Akutsu tells him about how she'd always clung to her when she was little and shows him some pictures from her childhood. Akutsu freaks out at her mom's actions and feels embarrassed. Her mom suddenly hugs her tightly and insists on calling her mommy again, but she quickly refuses and tries to get off her embrace. Uyama just stands there, enjoying the view. Mama Akutsu chugs some canned drinks and lays down on the bed. Akutsu calls her dad to come and pick up her mom. After a while, Akutsu goes back to his room. Uyama asks if she sends her mom off, but she doesn't reply. She swiftly goes up to him and hugs him tightly, which caught him by shock. He sees the canned drink that she ingested earlier. It is an alcoholic beverage. Okutsu gets on top of him. She's drunk after ingesting the alcoholic drink that her mom left. Uyama keeps telling her to control herself. Indeed, she acts like her mom when she's drunk. As Uyama expected, Akutsu leans in closer to him and asks for a kiss, but he is flustered by the sudden move. She keeps asking, but he refuses, telling her to just sleep it off. She calms down a bit and blatantly agrees, lowering his guard. When she has her chance, she quickly kisses him on the cheeks, making him lose his mind. Akutsu just laughs it off and teases him. He tells her that she can't just go kiss random guys when drunk. Akutsu explains that she won't kiss somebody if she doesn't like them. She leans in again to go for another kiss, but, well, she does as off in his arms. He spends the whole night googling alcohol true feelings. Uyama's classmates keep bugging him, asking if he and Akutsu have been intimate with each other. He denies it verily, but Yoku and Misaki flame him over and believe that they were truly being intimate. Akutsu shows up and yells at Uyama for not waking her up. This is her tenth late in a row, and so she has to listen to the nagging of their teacher. Their classmates think that they might have a chance to see her, so one of them makes an excuse to go to Uyama's place as their way of getting to know each other. With an intense gaze, Uyama smacks the guy's hand away from Akutsu, saying that they already have plans. Akutsu feels astonished and leaves the room, but on the other side of the door, she is flushed by the fact that he protected her and so she spends most of her time denying what her friends have witnessed. After that, everyone in their class knows not to get between them. Uyama, together with Akutsu, are chosen to be part of the three-legged race at sports day. Misaki and Yuko think that it will be funny to enter them as a pair. He tells her that they need to practice at least once, but she quickly refuses his idea. He isn't forcing her to do it. Instead, he'll just have to find someone else. It catches her attention, and suddenly she changes her mind, saying he might get lonely without her, so she agrees to his offer. In her mind, imagining Uyama doing the race with someone else bothers her completely. She also thinks that he's been looking extra cool after he protected her. So, the thought of some girl trying to steal him upsets her. They start by tying their feet together. Her mind faces trouble when she feels him closer to her, with her bosom touching the side of his chest. They begin walking as they focus on their practice. After a while, it feels easy for them to move because of how synchronized they are. Uyama thinks it might be because of how much time they spend together. She frankly tells him that she can easily stay with him forever. He tightens her grip on his shirt and says that he can also do that too. Then, both of them decide to take a break with their feet still tied. At the dining table, the Akutsu family is talking about Uyama. Her dad mentions that it is his place where he picked up her mom twice and insists on thanking him face to face. Akutsu tells her dad that it's fine and that she lives alone anyway. Papa Akutsu suddenly feels a sense of deja vu. He realizes that this she is in high school and lives alone like he used to. During that time, his wife used to hang out at his place too. Realizing that his wife and his daughter are almost the same nature, he concludes that Papa Akutsu will definitely visit Uyama to give him his thanks. Uyama catches a cold, so they aren't able to participate in the three-legged race. He apologizes for it over and over, but Akutsu just tells her that it's not a big deal. This even gives her a reason to skip sports day, and while at it, she will be looking out for him. Uyama deeply regrets it because they put an effort into practicing for the race. Akutsu tells him to brush it off and that they still have next year. She adds that they will be more in sync in a year and no one will beat them, since she is going to spend the whole year with him. Uyama takes it to his heart and acknowledges it. She blushes at what she just said and tells him not to worry about it. She then asks him if he badly wants to run in that race since he tries so hard to get out of bed despite being sick. Seeing how they practice, he also thinks that looking after him while sick will also similar to the three-legged race. He remembers the saying, marriage is like a three-legged race. Akutsu is taken by surprise at his response, yelling at how his brain goes from sports day to marriage. As she recalls a married couple, the sound of a bell envelops the room. 
it's rather too late, but she tells him anyway that her dad wants to visit him. Behold, Papa Akutsu has arrived. Papa Akutsu has arrived with Mama Akutsu. Sensing the intense aura of her father, Oyama asks Akutsu if he's about to get seriously hurt. Well, she isn't sure since it's also her first time. Suddenly, Papa Akutsu bows his head on the floor, apologizing for Akutsu's behavior. He admits that he was a little hostile because he wasn't sure if he could trust him. But now he realizes that Uyama is just the same as he was back then. Also, his assumptions are flawlessly correct. Akutsu's father is kind of passive. Uyama expects him to be the delinquent type, but they're just too similar. Even his room feels like Papa Akutsu's room before. And so, Papa Akutsu proceeds to tell their love story. Of course, the girls are protesting, embarrassed of their similarities. Uyama realizes that Papa Akutsu is dealing a lot of damage from the two. However, Mama Akutsu can't tolerate him anymore, and so she pulls his collar. But Papa Akutsu knows how to deal with her by just patting her head and telling her to calm down and hug him. Quite simple, right? Uyama thinks that he can use this technique as a reference. He said it out loud, enough to trigger Akutsu's tsundere personality. However, Uyama learns from Papa Akutsu, and so he also performs it. It probably feels so good that Akutsu gives in at first, but due to embarrassment, she yells that it won't work on her. Akutsu's parents enjoy watching them both and stay for a little while. The Akutsu parents finally go home after visiting Uyama. Akutsu asks him what they talked about, and just imagining his reaction, she backs up before he even says anything. She didn't expect her dad to talk to him that much, since he usually just flirts with her mom. She notices that Papa Akutsu and Uyama are similar, acting all shy and nervous. He responds that she's similar to her mother too, saying that they're the same when they're drunk. She was left speechless. Akutsu acts foolish about what he said and quickly shifts the topic. Uyama tells her that she even kissed him multiple times, to which she refuses and says it was only once. She remembers it. Akutsu loses her mind at the sudden confession and accepts that she's similar to her mom. She admits that she has no idea how that happened, but when she was drunk, she had the urge to kiss. Uyama blushes at her response and turns his head away. That's cute. In her defense, that doesn't count as a real kiss, so he questions it. She tells him that she wants her first kiss to be special, and that it wasn't the right time. Uya, standing outside the door, is satisfied with their bickering. Uyama arrives home feeling exhausted. He immediately lies down on the bed. Not long after, something falls on his face. It's Akutsu's underwear. He remembers putting up the hanging rod, so he guesses she left her underwear there to dry. Uyama finds it a bit brazen to leave underwear out in the open in a classmate's room, so then he decides to put them away in Akutsu's drawer. Before putting the underwear away, he stares at it for a while. Shortly after, Akutsu arrives, which makes Uyama panic. Akutsu's sudden presence scares him, so he accidentally stuffs her underwear into his pocket, which is bad because now it looks like he's stealing her underwear. But she doesn't notice anything yet, so he decides to wait for her to go to the bathroom. Uyama's plan fails because, momentarily, Akutsu notices that he's hiding something from her. She sees him put something inside his pocket, but he denies that he's hiding something. Akutsu teases him to take it by force if he's not going to show her. He keeps denying it out of embarrassment. He's afraid that she would get mad, but is just too persistent, so he ends up yelling at her. Uyama thinks she's going to get angry for yelling, but she just apologizes. That is not the reaction he expects. Now he's overthinking her reaction. He's contemplating whether to explain the situation to her or not, since he thinks it's not the right time. Akutu thinks he's ignoring her, so she apologizes once again. Akutu sounds like she's about to cry. Neither of them know what to do anymore. The mood is now heavy after Uyama yelled at Akutsu. Shortly after, he apologizes for yelling, and she does the same thing as well. Uyama feels awkward, but it's only fair, since from her point of view, it looks like he flipped out at her, and she doesn't even know the reason. Telling her to forget about it won't work because his behavior is too unusual for her to ignore. He's still contemplating whether he should come clean about the underwear thing, but he's afraid that she'll get mad. Moments later, Uyama decides to go to the grocery store and buy her something sweet to lighten the mood. Akutu asks him where he's going, afraid that he's going to leave her because he's mad. Shortly, Uyama admits everything about the underwear thing. Even though he is afraid of her reaction, he wants to make things go back to normal, so he explains what happened. Instead of getting angry about her underwear, Akutu is glad that Uyama is not mad at her. She thinks that he's going to leave her for good. In the end, the two of them apologize to each other and eventually make up and they decide to go to the store together. When Uyama comes back home, he finds Akutsu screaming because Misaki and Yuko are trying to undress her. Misaki explains that the cultural festival event at their school is coming up soon, and their class is doing a cosplay cafe. Thus, she's planning to make some money by getting Akutsu to cosplay. Last year, they also had a cafe, and Akutsu was very popular because of her hot outfit that she wore due to a bet she lost. Misaki thinks that if they sell Akutsu's photos and other merchandise with her cosplay, they can make a fortune. However, Akutsu doesn't like her idea at all, and she's not even going to come to the festival in the first place. Misaki then shows her the outfits that she bought, ignoring Akutsu's complaints. Yuko and Misaki are planning for the three of them to wear matching outfits. Akutsu thinks that the fit is too provocative for a cultural event, and so there's no way she's going to agree to their plan. Akutsu doesn't really want to, no matter how much Misaki forces her to. Yuko suggests selling Misaki's merchandise instead because she's too persistent. The tables have turned because they're now forcing Misaki to wear the outfit. 
In the end, she's left with no choice but to wear the costume against her will. The girls keep teasing her and even ask for Oyama's opinion. He says that Misaki looks cute, which changes Akutsu's mood. Akutsu suddenly disappears, so Yuko is looking for her. Shortly, she comes back into the room wearing the seductive maid outfit. Akutsu says that she couldn't bear to see poor Misaki suffering alone, so she decides to put on a costume as well. However, she is left dumbfounded when she sees that Misaki is no longer wearing the costume. Yuko teases her about getting jealous because of Iyama's compliment to Misaki. Akutsu is in denial and feels embarrassed later on, especially after she sees Uyama looking away. Misaki then asks about Uyama's opinion on Akutsu's costume. He admits that the outfit looks so good that he's having a hard time looking at it. He adds a personal opinion that he doesn't want other guys to see her in the photos wearing it. Akutsu's face is turning red. Later on, Misaki gives up on her plan and decides to send the photos to Uyama instead. In the end, all of them decided to skip the cultural festival. After Misaki and Yuko leave, Akutsu orders Uyama to delete the photos that Misaki sent. She doesn't like the idea that she's the only one getting embarrassed, so she makes him wear the costume. Momentarily, Misaki comes back to get the costume, but she finds Akutsu on top of Uyama, wearing it. The timing is a bit awkward, so Misaki immediately leaves the scene. Uyama is preparing for school as he tells Akutsu to start getting ready or they will be late. However, she has no plans to go to school at all. Just when Uyama is about to head off, Akutsu attempts to skip school for the day. She says that being alone is boring and she will get lonely waiting for him. He is quite hesitant at first, but ends up pretending that he has a sore throat, so he'll be staying home today. He panics about skipping school, afraid that they will call his parents, but Akutsu just tells him not to be a coward. A while ago, Akutsu begged him to skip school, and he couldn't refuse her, so they both ended up skipping school. Not long after, Misaki calls her and says that their teacher is angry. Akutsu plays the victim and says that Uyama is the one who suggested skipping class. He tries to go back to school, but she doesn't let him. Now they're arguing like a couple while still on the phone with Misaki. It turns out that the phone is on speaker since the teacher ordered it so. Everyone hears their conversation and feels malice towards their relationship. In a moment, they will both have their parents called to school. Following the school skipping incident, Akutsu's mom comes by. It is just her and Uyama in the room. She is aware that Akutsu is skipping school, but she doesn't think that she is involving him as well, so she apologizes to him. Uyama thinks that the timing is unfortunate since his mom will be coming any minute. As soon as Uyama's mom arrives, she scolds him for skipping school. His mom assumes that the woman in the room is Akutsu. She even tells them to be a responsible couple. Akutsu's mom then finds out about her daughter and Uyama's fake dating act. She can feel immense pressure coming from his mom, so she decides to pretend to be her daughter and put on an act. Uyama's mother is convinced that they are actually a couple. A few moments later, Akutsu arrives and finds her mother clinging onto Uyama, saying that she loves him. His mother is now confused because there are two Akutsu in front of her. Akutsu is angry at her mother for hugging Uyama, but in her mother's defense, it's all because of their fake dating scheme. Uyama's mom thinks that his son is having a love triangle with his girlfriend's mom. Akutsu and her mom don't have a good relationship, so they're just arguing the whole time. After a while, Akutsu then admits that Uyama is her boyfriend, and that no one else can have him since his mother thinks that they are in a love triangle. Akutsu's mom then explains that she only cares for her husband and that everything is just a misunderstanding. Uyama's mom is quite confused at the moment, but she just shoved her worries away. Somehow, all ends well, and the misunderstanding is resolved. Misaki comes over to Uyama's place to talk about the school trip. He is quite surprised that Akutsu actually wants to participate in a school event for once. A school trip is like taking a vacation, and she likes those kind of things since they are basically free to do whatever for most of it. Misaki notices that Uyama is not excited about the trip. He explains that he can already imagine how he's going to be the one left over after the groupings the next day. The group needs four to five people, and Misaki suggests including him in their trio. She also thinks that Uyama and Akutsu can have their alone time if they're all in the same group. Akutsu blushes at the thought of her and Uyama alone on a school trip, but she doesn't want to admit that she's happy about it, so she tells him to carry her bags and stuff as an excuse. She adds that he probably just wants to see the girls in their swimsuits. Uyama is wondering why she's talking about swimsuits. It turns out that they're going on two different trips. He switched to the one to Tokyo while the girls were going to the Okinawa trip. Akutsu is now in a terrible mood after she realizes that Uyama and her will not be together on the school trip. Akutsu, Misaki, and Uyama have been silent after realizing that they can't go on the school trip together. After a while, Misaki decides to go home. She tells Uyama to cheer Akutsu up before she leaves the scene. Uyama is left alone with Akutsu, not having any clue how to make her feel better. He's actually bummed out that they can't go on the school trip together, but he's not sure if that's the case for Akutsu as well. Akutsu notices his sad face, so she teases him about wanting to go on the trip with her so badly. She even offers to give him photos of her wearing a swimsuit, but there will be a fee. Her behavior makes Uyama think that she's perfectly fine. However, he remembers Misaki telling him to cheer up. Momentarily, he tells Akutsu that they could go somewhere together someday, just the two of them. He instantly regrets blurting out things without thinking because he thinks that Akutsu is going to be put off. Akutsu agrees to his plan without hesitation. She's getting excited and starts asking questions about their trip together. Uyama tells her that she's glad she's happy about the idea. In Akutsu's defense, she's disagreeing to his suggestion out of pity because he looks sad. 
Now they're back to teasing each other. It looks like they sorted it out. In the end, they both agree to go somewhere with just the two of them. Akutsu realizes what she did to Uyama. She was so drunk that she kissed him. Akutsu comes to this realization after the kiss. She pretends to be asleep. She just couldn't stop thinking about it. Uyama knows that she's drunk, so she'll probably just let it slide. She just hopes that she doesn't mess things up. That was the first time that Akutsu ever kissed someone. She doesn't remember the feeling anymore. A weird thought comes to her mind. Akutsu somehow wants to keep pretending that she's drunk so she can kiss him again. She feels silly for having such thoughts, so she shrugs them off. After a break from practice, Uyama is trying to untie the knot that is stuck and ties his and Akutsu's feet together. Akutsu is at her limit, and she needs to go to the bathroom or else it's going to leak. She thinks that Uyama is taking his sweet time to untie the knot because he enjoys torturing her. She's about to piss herself at any time. Uyama explains that he doesn't want to ruin the cloth because it's the teacher's, but there's no choice but to cut it. Akutsu stops him from cutting it because she suddenly feels like it's going to be a bad omen. She tries to untie the knot herself, and she's successful. She's able to protect the red cloth of fate and can now go to the bathroom freely. Uyama watches Akutsu as she moves her things from the drawer into a bag. He thinks that she's tired of him and is now trying to leave him, so he calls her name. He asks her where she's going, and Akutsu explains that she's packing her things for the school trip since she's not going to buy everything twice. Uyama gets embarrassed, so he turns away, but Akutsu keeps bothering him about his question. Eventually, he admits that he thinks she's going to pack up and leave him. He says that like Akutsu is her wife or something. After that, Akutsu assures him that even if she were his wife, she would never leave him. Afterward, both of them go on their own trips. Uyama and Akutsu come back from the school trip wearing the souvenirs they got for each other. They decide to catch up. Akutsu asks him about his trip. The trip is fun enough for Uyama, even though before the trip, when the groups were being decided, he looked like a ghost. Akutsu teases him for being lonely without her presence. She is messing with him since they didn't see each other for four days, and so she bets he cries at night. On the other hand, Okinawa is pretty normal for Akutsu. She proceeds to show Uyama some beat shots with Misaki and Yuko. Their pictures almost seem like a real photo shoot. Akutsu asks Uyama for some pictures from his trip, but he only has photos of the city. She finds it sad because he doesn't have pictures of himself. She wonders if he actually had fun there. Okinawa was the best for Akutsu because she could barely pull herself away from the beach. It is also evident in the photos that she's having so much fun. While looking at her pictures, Uyama admits that he feels lonely in the evenings. He's still scrolling through the photos when he comes across a video. Akutsu tells him to play it since she hasn't seen it either. In the video, Akutsu is sleeping while calling out Uyama's name. She keeps looking for him and says she's lonely. They can also hear Misaki and Yuko's voices in the background. She immediately orders him to turn off the phone out of embarrassment. In her defense, she tells him that it was just a dream. Akutsu is now pissed at her friends for filming her. For a moment, Uyama thinks that maybe going on separate trips isn't entirely bad. It is already December now, which explains why it's so cold. Akutsu is freezing, so she decides to turn the heater up. Uyama tries to stop her since it's already on, but there's no other way to survive the cold. He's about to suggest that she could close her top, but he instantly changes his mind for good reason. Akutsu notices that he's staring at her chest, so she starts to tickle him. Not long after, she realizes that his hands are warm. She holds his hands tighter and starts rubbing their hands against each other. Uyama's face turns red, and she notices it. Akutsu then starts to cup his face. It is definitely warmer than usual. She orders him to touch her face to show how cold it is. Uyama is hesitant at first, but he is also curious, so he follows her in the end. Uyama starts rubbing her face. Akutsu has pretty, soft, and smooth skin. It feels so nice to touch that he almost doesn't want to stop. He seems to be enjoying touching her face, but after a while, she already feels warm. Akutsu tells Uyama to take his hands off her face, which results in him being defensive and immediately ordering her to turn the heater back down. Akutsu amuses herself and their new katatsu. She never thought that they would get one, but Uya surprises both of them. Uya mumbles something creepy to herself, which Akutsu finds creepy, so she thinks that maybe the katatsu is cursed. However, Uyama doesn't believe that. Akutsu decides to sit and do nothing all day. Under the katatsu, Uyama's foot touches her. He apologizes and says that it was an accident, but she uses it against him to bring her a drink. She then orders him to bring her the next volume of the book she's reading. She's getting so comfortable in the katatsu that she doesn't want to get up. Akutsu keeps ordering Uyama around until he finally gets tired. He tells her to get up and gets the things she wants herself. She tells him that he still hasn't made up for what he did, but he already has done enough. Uyama flinches as she tries to rub his legs under the katatsu. She tries to act cute as she forces him to follow her orders. She will only stop when he gives in. If Uyama goes along with her demands now, he will be stuck running her errands all winter, so he decides to shut her down. Their feet keep grappling under the katatsu, and though the things on the table fall and clatter. Eventually, both of them give up. They end up sulking at each other since neither of them can leave the katatsu for a while. Akutsu finds Katatsu so incredible that she's willing to take winter any day of the year if she has a Katatsu. Uyama already brings her food and entertainment, so now she just needs a toilet so she doesn't have to get up. Speaking of which, Uyama is still not back after she sent him to buy drinks. Shortly, Uyama comes back together with Uya to give her something. Uya tells him that she's not expecting anything in exchange for the Katatsu she gives them. 
Not long after, Ikutsu buries herself in the katatsu, and Uya falls to the floor shortly after. There are now two girls lying on the floor in front of Uyama, and he doesn't have any clue what's going on. Akutsu is already excited to eat ramen, so she tells Uyama to hurry up. He then puts two bowls of ramen on the table. It is already 2am, so Akutsu teases him for eating ramen past midnight, even though she's the one who wants ramen in the first place. Akutsu says that you can make exceptions for ramen even at 2am. It is their first time eating ramen together. Uyama remembers reading online that girls are too shy to slurp ramen in front of guys, but it's different for Akutsu. She slurps the ramen like a dog in front of Uyama because it's too delicious. He thinks that she's not the type to get shy around him. Momentarily, Akutsu notices that Uyama's ramen is different from hers, so she wants to taste it. Uyama likes his ramen spicy, but Akutsu doesn't know that, so when she tastes it, her lips instantly burn. She thinks that they're swollen, so she makes Uyama check them. Uyama can't look at her properly because it reminds her of the time she got drunk and kissed him. He immediately stands up and assures her that her lips are not swollen, afraid that she will realize what he's thinking. His weird behavior makes her wonder if her breath stinks because of the garlic ramen. Meanwhile, Uya is eavesdropping on Akutsu and Uyama's conversation through the door. She thinks that it's never too late at night to be acting like a couple. 